Here we go. Jazz hey. hands. Jazz hands. Up and rolling. All right. Put on your big girl panties. We are live. Freedom is live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios in Gainesville. I'm Hank Strange. We have special guest Don, who is the gunsmith at Big Daddy Guns. He's on the show. He's also, we're in the same building, but we're in separate rooms so that, you know, we can make this a little bit easier. He's afraid to be in the same room with me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't, yeah. I don't want to get my butt kicked. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm a little bit tired, not ready for the fight. <laughs> but anyway, so Don's here. We're going to talk gunsmithing. Welcome to everyone who's uh, already hanging out with us. We've got a bunch of people hanging out in the chat and others joining us. So if you've got gunsmithing questions to ask Don, we're going to talk about gunsmithing and Sarah coding and all that kind of stuff. Right, Don? Anything you guys need to know. Absolutely. And anything else we want to talk about, it's kind of like a slow gun news day. So I figured we'll talk about this. So I just want to invite everyone who's watching us right now. Don't forget to like this video. Hit the thumbs up. All right. Definitely hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed to the Hank Strain situation. And please, please, please share this with all your friends on social media. Let them know that we're doing, we're, we got the show going on. It's going to be fun. Invite them to join in and hang out with us. Okay. And probably joining us in a few minutes is going to be Walter from Safety Harbor. I think he's like still testing some guns in the shop. You know, Walter is like always working, always working. And, we, and we'll put him to work when he comes on live with us so let me just say what's up to everyone that's hanging out in the chat i see the tyvin show okay i see chris b matthew may chris bullis all right all those guys are there in the in in the chat what's up to those guys and there's probably some other people that i don't see right now so i will give shout outs as we go on i see kevin dufresne um he says uh desert tech just released 100 mdrs into the wild uh, that's interesting. I haven't heard that. Um, did you guys hear anything about that in the shop, Don? Not yet. No, we usually get most Desert Tech news because a lot of times we've got them on the on the wall. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll check into that. I'll look into that, or we'll look into it tomorrow and see what we could find out there. Um, you know, and we'll see what's going on with that. That will be good news if that's going if that's what's happening. I see Razor JB Joe Carpenter. See, I got it right. 50 Stitches Steel, Joe Nutson, all those guys in the building. So, Don, uh, first thing, why don't you give the folks out there a little background on who you are, how you wind up uh, being a gunsmith and working with Big Daddy Guns. And I think you, you also have your own company, Aces and Aids. Yes. Um, about 30 years ago, me and the Marine Corps had a, about an eight-year stint. And in the Marine Corps... <laughs> Most of their stuff is everything that the army can't use anymore. They give to us to use. So we got to <laughs> fix it. So we have to fix everything. Uh -oh. Got started being an armor with the uh, Marine Corps SWAT team for a few years. Um, when I got out, I've worked on guns my whole life, but I wound up going into auto mechanics because you made more money at it than gunsmithing. But a couple of years ago, well, about seven years ago now, I decided to start doing the gunsmithing again full time and open my own company and then tony asked me to come and help him do the gunsmith and then do stuff in his store so i i work with tony and i do some the sera coating and other gunsmithing on the side for myself yeah absolutely so tony for those who don't know tony's big is the big daddy in big daddy guns he is big daddy <laughs> yeah he doesn't he doesn't look like big daddy he will fool you <laughs> Right? No Most one knows people who don't he is. have a clue who he is when he walks in the store, except when he has the Big Daddy t-shirt on. He could walk in the store with a regular shirt and nobody would have a clue who he was. Yeah. He's the antithesis of what you would think Big Daddy looks like. I think I've shown him like once or twice here on the show. Even when I first started doing stuff with Big Daddy Guns and I was in there, I actually didn't meet Tony because I met a bunch of other guys. I came to the store on my own and Don was there and the other guys who work in the store. Everyone there. It's always cool with me, especially Don. I don't know why we got along. <laughs> you know, I get along with everybody. It's, I mean, yeah. not to get along with somebody is unless they cause an issue. It's the only time you don't get along with somebody. Yeah, but in the gun store, I mean, we're all gun guys, so it's easy. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. So we so, all have the same moral value. Let's put it that way. Yeah, exactly. We have a lot in common. I think you know, obviously, we have differences, but we have 
you know, for the most part, more in common than we do. The thing is, is that I was actually doing stuff with Big Daddy and hanging out with these guys, and they were all really cool with me, but I'd never met, I'd never met Tony, Big Daddy, and he was coming in and out of there all the time, and um, and, and I'd seen him and everything, and then one day someone showed me a picture of, because I was like, who, who is this Big Daddy guy? You know, and I saw a picture of him, I, I was like, oh, I see this guy coming in here all the time, and I'm always running my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he's cool. He's a good guy. We'll get him to come on sometime. Right? He's a he's a he's a genuine yeah, he, died in the wool gun guy. He's the most honest and genuine person you'll ever meet. He's just absolutely cool to work for. Yeah. So, just tell folks a little bit. Like, how did how long has Tony had the store? Tony, I believe, opened the store in 2013, working out of the garage of his house. Oh. <laughs> basically about how I got started. I opened in 2012 working out of my gun shop out of my shop at my house. Yeah. He was, I, I still work out of my house. Yeah. So that's cool. So that's where you run aces and eights out of, right? Yes. Yeah. So, I, I do all the Sierra coding, heavy gunsmithing, stuff like that, stuff that I can't do at Big Daddy's. I do at my shop. Right. Do you guys, do you have a website for aces and eights? I do not. Oh, okay. I, I've, my... I started out, the reason for the name Aces and Eights is because I started out uh, SAS Shooters, Single Action Shooting Society. It's the Wild Wild West guns, single action Colts and lever action rifles. That's, that was my initial start. Okay. And Aces and Eights with, uh, was, seemed to be a good name for the company, working with the Wild Wild West guns. Right. Is that like a gambling thing from back in the cowboy days? You don't know Aces and Eights? No. You're going to have That's to school me on that one. <laughs> Dead man's hand. Oh, okay. I don't know anything about gambling, Don. <laughs> <laughs> now, Aces and Eights was the hand that was being held when Wild Bill Hickok got shot in the back. Oh, okay. Aces and Eights. Oh, I see. I see. That's I why it's that. called the Dead Man's Hand. Oh, okay. So that started after that. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, are, are you originally from the Gainesville area? No, I'm, I'm one of those damn Yankees. Oh. <laughs> I was in New York. I was in New York. I grew up in New York. And then after I joined the Marine Corps, I was like, you know what? 1,800 miles between my ex-wife and I is about the right distance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably not bad. So how and you said you were in the military for about eight years, right? 1986 to 1994. Oh, okay. So uh, and what kind of stuff did you do in the Marines, if you don't mind me asking? I was military police. I was the one all the Marines hated. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I was the one stopping their fun. Yeah, now, that's, a tough, that's a tough job. I mean, I've, I've I had other friends that, in the Marines and were MPs. That's not fun, right, to lock up these other dudes. No, it's, I mean, it wasn't, I, you hate to go out and stop guys that are just trying to have a good time after what they've all gone through and everything, but yeah. they got at least have some representation of manners. Yeah. But it, I spent uh, a little over four years in the Marine Corps SWAT team. Um, it just, I did a lot of extra things. I didn't just do the military police side of it. Okay. And then you've just been, you've, you were probably like raised with guns. You said, well, uh, you, you're, you grew up in New York. Now, which part of New York? Are we talking New York City no, or? No, 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 no. Other end of the state. <laughs> Buffalo, okay. New York. Oh, okay. The, the town my grandparents lived in, if you blink, you miss downtown. <laughs> okay. But, so did yeah, you do a lot of gun stuff growing up? Never saw a pistol till I joined the Marine Corps, but I, I got my first shotgun at 12 years old, got my next shotgun at 16, started hunting at nine. Yeah, I've been around guns most of my life. Okay, cool. Mr. Some Guns wants to know if you were in Okinawa. Yes, I spent a year in Okinawa, Camp Foster. Oh, okay. Is that like, is that where a lot of, um, like, there are seven the Marine right Corps bases in Okinawa. Okinawa, Japan is, got it. I think about a third of the island is actually U.S. military, and then the rest of it is Japanese. Oh, okay. But, um, there's an Air Force base, a couple of Army bases. There's even a U.S. Coast Guard base on Okinawa. And wow. then you have Hanson and Fatima and Foster and Butler, and there's multiple Marine Corps bases on the island. So how do, because, you know, you always hear, you always hear that the Japanese are really not too happy of us, about us being over there. How was it? Oh, they loved you? us on Okinawa. Oh. All the Japanese people over there, mm -hmm. they love us on Okinawa. 
Okay, cool. I see we've got Walter. I don't know if he's completely set up. Give me a couple seconds. Yeah, okay, Walter's getting set up. Okay, so cool. So now, um, what was I going to say to you? So now you were in the automotive business. Mm -hmm. What were you doing in the automotive business? I was business? a senior master mechanic for Ford Motor Company. Uh, spent 23 years working for several different dealerships, one in New York and a few of them down here in Florida. Okay, so does that make you a Ford guy? Do you only get, like, drive Ford? I own all Fords. It doesn't make me a Ford guy. For the most part nowadays, cars are all the same. They've gotten so generic that one car is not really that much better than the other. Yeah, that's I work true. On, I, I own Fords because I know every aspect of them and I can work on them with no issue. Yeah. So, but and you are a car guy. You are into cars. That didn't like kill your your enthusiasm for cars, right? Uh, well, let's put it this way. At one point, I was one of only thirteen senior masters in the state of Florida that had over ten years as a senior master. And Goodyear changes my oil now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you know that happens, right? If you do it so many times, you're like, you know what? Big work I, I still do myself. The little work I let somebody else do. Oh, it's yeah. more fun working I don't on guns. Oil either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't well, I, do, I do I do in the suburban because it's not hard to do, but in the fiat it's a pain in the ass. So I, I let somebody else. Oh no, okay. A fiat? Difficult to change the oil? There's a you there's can't a, get underneath it. No, well, I know. I'm just being I'm just messing with there's with a Walter. pan there's a there's a pan underneath that has to be removed. So you know what? Let them do it. It's not that much for thirty dollars I can change the oil. Yeah. Oh, oh that's good. Your oil change is thirty bucks. Yeah, 30, 35, yeah. Oh, mine is between 100 and 120 bucks. Got to well, love you full it. synthetic, guys. Well, yeah. well, uh, you know, they say that's because I have like the V8 or whatever, so I guess it's yeah. The Abarth, the Abarth is uh, all synthetic. That's all Fiat does, I think, is synthetic in, in them, so. Um, yeah. Yeah, but the Fiat has what? Three and a half, four quarts, and his car probably an eight-quart system. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. So I had to like, I would, you know, I had shock. <laughs> when they the first time they told me what that oil change, I was like, "What the hell is wrong with you guys?" But you but, see, the best part about my truck, I can get an oil change and a rotate for fifty bucks, and I never have to lay down on my back. It's worth fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, so that's you know that's pretty good. So you got you got tired of the of doing car stuff, right? Yeah, it just twenty three years of turning wrenches with Ford, and prior to that, I spent six years with Goodyear. Okay. So. so Go ahead. Needed to find something that I could still work with my hands and still use tools. And I went, hmm, I, know, I like to work on guns. And because I work on them, it means I have to test fire all of them. I get to yeah. shoot a lot more. <laughs> Absolutely. So you do a lot of gun stuff. And I know you also reload. Yes. You know, and then you're the guy at Big Daddy Guns that gives the uh, concealed weapons classes. Conceal weapons, learn to shoot. We have a basic carbine class where you come in and you pick out all the parts you want for your AR. We okay. instruct you on building it, and then we go out and shoot it. You learn to build it. You learn to diagnose it. You learn to function check it. You get to do everything and uh, basically go out and shoot it and make sure it works after you're done building it. You can honestly say, I built my own gun. Okay, yeah. Okay, so how often do you guys give that class? The basic carbine class is about once every other month. Uh, maximum students in the class are six to eight, so it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one with the instructor. I basically set you up in two-man teams, and you spend time helping each other build guns. Okay. And we supply all the tools. We supply everything you need. You just come and buy all your parts for your firearm and build the gun. Okay, cool. So that's, you know, so you're just base. are you just basically doing stuff with people here in the Florida area or, or is there stuff that, um, you know, you can do long distance with people? Um, there's not a lot of classes long distance yet. I mean, we may be able to set a podcast up with people doing classes, the basic carving class or something, but we haven't done that yet. Most of it's just locals. Okay. All right, cool. So, you know what, let's get to a while, you know, I, I'm, I'm inviting everyone out there to hit us up with questions, the stuff that you guys want to know. Um, let's talk about like the Cerakote thing. Why Cerakote over Duracote? That's one of the questions. Um, the average, when they talk about coatings, they talk about their cycle rating. How many times the firearm can be cycled before you wear through to the metal? 
Okay. Duracoat is roughly a 3,000 wear cycle, which means you cycle the firearm 3,000 times before you wear through it and you start seeing wear. Okay. Dur that's Duracoat. Ceracoat is a 10,000 wear cycle. Okay. Oh, more than three times the wear cycle. Um, so it's much more durable. Duracoat has a limited amount of the chemicals that don't affect it. Pretty much unless you're pouring acid on the Ceracoat, you're not going to affect it. Oh, okay. There's not, a, there's not a gun cleaner out there that affects the Ceracoat. Okay. So, um, I mean, you're not you're not saying you're not against Duracoat, right? I mean, that's no, real easy no, for people to Dur do themselves. Duracoat is actually that. easier for the average person to do. If you want to be able to change the your color of your gun and everything over and over again, it's not a bad thing. There's a lot more options of colors too. With its Duracoat? Yeah, there's hundreds of options of, for colors. Yeah. Well, the, the other part with the Ceracoat is I mix custom colors. I'll yeah, take two. Or th there's yeah. an infinite number of colors with Dur with Ceracoat. Average guy can't do that though. Anybody can do it. All you no, need I, is the I, syringe that they. What, what I'm trying to say, the average guy can't do it successfully. I'm sure they can. If you go to the Dirk or the Ceracote website, they give you all the formulas for the mixtures on the website. Anybody can do it. So let's say someone wanted to set up to do their own Ceracoting. What do you think they would need? You know, let someone, you know, people just want to do it on their own or maybe get into the business of Ceracote doing it. Ceracote has a kit that you can purchase that comes with 12 different colors. It comes with your beaker to mix it in. It comes with a spray gun. You're going to need a, a air compressor. One of the little small ones you can get for $50 at Harbor Freight works fine. Okay. The only problem is, is you have to bead blast the metal, and it has to be blasted with aluminum oxide. Okay. Because the aluminum oxide actually etches the metal, and that's what bonds the Cerakote to the metal so well. That's why it's so durable. Okay. So is that um, so? What are we talking like? If you wanted to go into it from scratch, what kind of money are we looking at to get set up, have a system? Average, you can get the the big blast cabinets from Harbor Freight for about two hundred dollars. You can get a decent size air compressor for from Harbor Freight for four to six hundred. You need the paint gun, and then you've either got to use your wife's oven and piss her off <laughs> or, you or, buy build, oven. or you got to yeah. build one no you can actually yeah, build them out of cabinets really just take a big metal cabinet you insulate it with the ac uh duck board silver side in and then put a hot plate in the bottom of it and turn the hot plate on it's only got to get to 250 degrees oh okay so you're, you're looking at around a thousand bucks to get going right yeah about a thousand dollars to get you up and running pretty good okay and then buying the cerakote supplies and all that not you buy too. them right online. They ship them to you. Uh, you get them within a few days. The little tester bottles that they call them are four fluid ounces. They're thirty-five dollars a piece. You mm -hmm. can average probably two to three guns with it. Okay. Yeah. So you know now, what about skill-wise? Do you think it's the kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> Any person that is used to painting vehicles or used to using a spray gun. Right. Shouldn't have an issue with it. Okay. Yeah, it's probably, you know, if you know if you don't have patience like me. <laughs> yeah, patience is another thing. You have to take your time. A lot of people, you have a lot to of people a lot of people can't do it. Trust me. I mean, yeah. not the first time. No, I've yeah. I've seen a lot of really real I've seen a Back lot of jobs. really bad Cerakotes from yeah. companies. Yeah. Well. But isn't that isn't that like now so isn't that like anything, right? When you start doing it, you're not going to be, oh, yeah. you know, that good. You have to. You have to know that you're going to lose a certain amount of work trying to get into it. I mean, is there a way that you can practice things you can practice on doing yeah, before you, you actually mess up a gun? Cerakote works on plastic. It works on wood. It works on metal. You can pretty much spray. You could spray your paint booth if you wanted to to see if it worked. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. So it's a you know it's not a. You know what the thing out there like first of all I think if you if you're going to spend a thousand bucks you have to really think to yourself are you going to do are you you know what's you the have difference a, you, if you have to do a lot of guns to make yeah. that money back up Yeah so if you're going to do a lot of guns and you have a lot of friends that you can do it for 
and there's not like for for example where you live or something like that's not a bad business to get into just know there's going to be there's going to be some kind of learning curve to the whole thing well technically yeah. if you're going to start spraying guns you got to get an ffl yeah nowadays you so, do. oh it's, okay it's not, yeah it's, it's not just as simple as starting to do it right well, you okay. can you can do it you know right. until until the man catches up with you but you can yeah. do it for yourself without a business but you can't do it as a business right Oh, so okay, we got Babyface just joining hey. us. Well. I don't know. Do you recognize Babyface, Don? He comes into yeah. the, he comes into Big Daddy Guns, but yeah, I don't too. know. I don't know if you know we call him Babyface. <laughs> I did not know you called him Babyface. You just informed me of something, and you will now be known as Babyface when you walk in the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be so. He's gonna like, why did you he, tell Don? <laughs> hey, he's gonna come to the shop now, and by the time he leaves, he will be calling you, going, Hank. <laughs> Yeah. So the thing we were talking about it. So, OK, if you get into doing seracoding as a business uh, with guns, so you if you well, if you're doing your own guns, you're fine. Right. Yeah. As long as you're not selling the work. OK. So what if if you're doing other people's guns, though, you cannot do it. Is that what you're saying? You Unless actually you have, have to have FFL? a class seven manufacturer FFL because you are doing gunsmithing to the guns. Yeah, that was something that happened in the last year. Um, it's kind of horse shit, to be honest with you. Yeah, so I it's thought that was a part of that. It's another, it's another restrictive thing. Obama thought he was going to throw at everybody. And, you know, oh, okay. Because, you know. I mean, if, the, if people aren't actually leaving the guns with you and all that stuff, I don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't You're matter. taking the part again. The, it's considered that you are actually improving something on the gun. If you improve a part of the gun, in this case, you're in, improving the finish. Whether it's accuracy or whatever you're improving, it is considered a gunsmithing item, and you okay. have to have your manufacturer FFL. Okay. So, I mean, that's not an impossible thing to do. So there's other steps to it here if you really want to get into it as a business and do it with guns. I know, um, you know, Mike Bryant is saying that you can do knives, Cerakote knives. Um, some guys are into that. That you don't need any FFL for. No. And I've yeah. Cerakoted exhaust manifolds on cars. I've Cerakoted intake manifolds. There's a lot of other things that you can Cerakote besides firearms. Right. But if you actually want to work on firearms, you have to have an FFL. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. That, but, you know, it's not the, the process of getting your FFL. It is, it is a little bit. You know, there is some work to it, but it's not super difficult. And I think you can still do it. Lots of people out there think that um, there's been rumors that, you know, they're going to shut, like, close down on that, on people having, like, small independent FFLs. But that's not true yet, right? Well, the other – the Class 1 FFL, yes. If you're going to uh, buy, sell, trade, whatever, yes, you can get your Class 1. Class 7 is slightly different. They actually want you to – not really prove, but you have to be able to work on them, fix them, repair them, everything that has to be done to it. You can't just have a little store. They want to know that you're actually going to work on firearms and manufacture them, okay. repair them. Okay. The class um, seven's not given out as easy as the class one is. Okay. And you're saying that you have to have a class seven in order to do this? You have to have a, a, an FFL where you can gunsmith, and a class one is not a gunsmithing FFL. Okay. All right. So you know what? Uh, that's – yeah, okay. It does get complicated. Yes, it does. <laughs> if you're going to do gun stuff, it's really not that simple, unfortunately, because of all these laws, which is just a little bit of nonsense. But, you know, I, I guess I uh, – I guess I get it there. So what's the what the what's the process of someone um, of a, of you seracoding a gun? So some I'm assuming someone brings it into you. Mm -hmm. You you what can happened? even ship them into us if it's somebody from out of town or something that wants a gun done. You can ship them into us. Basically, if you're going to ship it in, go online and look at the colors. If you're coming in, I have color charts in the store for everybody to look at. You can say <laughs> just like going to Lowe's and saying, "Hey, I want a, this color." You can pick one of the color charts, pick whatever color you want. We decide whether what patterns you're going to do, all kinds of different stuff. And from there, you leave it with me. It usually takes 7 to 14 days. But uh, okay. so, 
So what kind of stuff can we Cerakote on the gun? And, and uh, I know it's tough to say exactly what the cost is because, you know, there's so many different things. But what can you Cerakote on the gun? Can you basically Cerakote every single part? Everything or? except rubber stock. Anything that is rubber cannot be Cerakoted. The plastic, the fiberglass, the metal, any part of that can be Cerakoted. Okay. So um, I know you've got some example, or you've got, yeah, actually you've got some examples over there, yeah. right, of, of things that you Cerakoted. Yeah. So pop something up so we can take a look at that. I'm going to hit up the some first one is here. The first one, this is just, uh, I did the upper receiver and barrel. This is a uh, oh, Remington 700. Yeah, um, that, that's, so, that's so badass looking, man. I really and, like the, the color on that. Yeah. This, this was one of Magpul's original colors. It's called Foliage Green. Ooh. Um, Magpul doesn't even make magazines or anything to go with this anymore. I don't know <laughs> why they, because it's a real popular color. So this one was just a real easy one. This is a single color on the receiver and barrel. Um, I can, I've actually got another scope mount that I'm doing for it now in the foliage so that the scope mount matches the rest of it. Um, but yeah, this is just your basic one color. Something like this is about $110 to oh, okay. do the upper receiver and... So that what 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 was it you have uh, what you call what did you call that foliage on the bottom foliage green? Oh, okay, mm -hmm. so that whole job is something like around a hundred bucks. Yeah, one hundred and ten dollars to do an upper receiver and a barrel. Oh, okay. Then we have one that a guy decided he wanted to turn an AR, a four fifty eight SOCOM AR, into a P fifty one Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. And this is what you wind up with. So. This is this is another one that is just OD green. Um, we did the this is a Spikes Tactical lower that we did the mouth up to look like the uh, P51. Most of the steps and stuff on the P51s were yellow so that they'd be bright and people could see them. So we did all the hardware and stuff like that in the yellow. Put a muzzle brake on it. The nose cone on the propeller is red, so we made it red. Now this one has a second handguard that goes with it that's 15 inches long. We have a full hybrid suppressor that goes underneath it, the longer handguard, and the longer handguard actually has propellers spiraling down the handguard with the oh. yellow tips on the handguard. Okay, that's getting complicated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold, Something it, hold like it up this. a little bit if you don't mind. Yeah, so folks can get a look at it out there. So this one, this Cerakote was about three hundred and twenty five dollars okay. take quite a while to do there was a lot of stuff involved that's still not as bad as it would be for all the little pieces i mean it, is it a lot of work you have to do i think you've told me with some things you've got to like spray on one color first and then mask off and do the other stuff yeah i wish i had brought my my 458 in because i've got a three color camouflage scheme that i did on mine Mm -hmm. um, it's two different colors of brown and then a black overlay across the top of it. That one took, you know, with all the bake time and all the shooting time, it took roughly four to six hours to do. Four to six hours. Okay, cool. Uh, Babyface, if you don't mind, um, I'm, there's people saying that Desert Tech has released some MDRs. Finally? <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. So look into that and see. I'm trying to see. Um, someone was telling me that there's a there's um, someone on Instagram that showed some um, MDRs or some of the forums and stuff like that. Maybe a hundred of them have gone out. So I don't know if you can get any info on that while we're uh, while we're digging into this stuff here. So um, Walter, did you have any comments, questions? I look, you look looks like you want to show a gun. No, no. I'm just holding guns. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I, I've used both Cerakote and Duracoat, and they have applications for both. Um, 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 yeah, they both work. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't do you prefer to do one thing over the other, or is it, it depends, just like it how depends much time? what I'm doing? You know, like I said, it depends what I'm doing. Um, Duracoat. There's some Duracoat that I use for touch up on things, and you can't do that with Cerakote. So. Okay. Uh, that's just the way it is. So yeah, they both have their they both have their place. Yeah, yeah. Cerakote's kind of a one shot deal. If you mess it up, you have to redo it. And yeah. and I've done some messing up where it's like it's <laughs> perfect, and I just bumped into something when it was still wet, and I was like, ah! 
<laughs> exactly. I would, believe me, I have done that myself. So what <laughs> happens when you mess up? I pull out some, I mean, it might not be approved, but I blast it down with some brake cleaner to strip it all off or acetone and clean it all off and start over. Yeah, you got to start from scratch. Yep. Oh, okay. So what do you usually do to go back to scratch, Don? Depends on if I actually added the hardener or not to the... <laughs> <laughs> There's a, when you're mixing it up, you have to add a hardener to it. Right. And if you're busy taping off stuff and you forget to add the hardener to it, Ooh. it never dries. Yeah, it's not good. No. It never hard. Doesn't matter how long you bake. Okay. So, but yeah, you got to <laughs> clean it off and restart. And so it's if you make a mistake, it can go from a six-hour Cerakote to a twelve-hour Cerakote. <laughs> oh, okay. That does not sound like fun. No, no that's that why doesn't. you take your yeah. time and try. And yeah. So now here's the thing. Do you? I know you give a lot of different classes at the gun store. Have you ever done Cerakote classes? Looks like looks like he's frozen. Uh oh. Uh oh. Frozen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so he's back. <laughs> yeah. Did you? I don't know if you heard what I said there. Have you ever? I know you give a lot of classes at the gun shop. Do you ever give Cerakote classes? No. Um, I don't give any Cerakote classes. Um, their Cerakote offers a class, but it's seventeen hundred dollars, and you have to fly Ooh. to Oregon to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah. Well, that's that's so much for that, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's not happening. So, tell us what kind of classes do you give it? Because I know you you have a bunch of different classes that you give there. Um, I'm an NRA pistol instructor. I'm an NRA reloading instructor. We offer NRA certified reloading classes. Uh, we do the basic carbine class. Um, I we have a learn to shoot class. Um, I'm actually in the middle right now of, of writing a women's self-defense class, pistol self-defense class. So and we're writing new classes all the time. Okay, cool. Also, someone wants to know, um, have you tried DuraBlue, and what do you think of it? I've, I've never even heard of that. Dura Neither blue. have I. It's yeah. their, it's their no, new coating that simulates bluing once it's put on. Yeah, it's a DuraBlue. Oh, really? It looks like a blue. Yeah. It looks oh. pretty good. It's pretty cool. Um, I, I would imagine it's pretty touchy putting it on, but yeah, it's pretty cool when it's done right. So, hmm. yeah, I, I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Yeah. So someone's good. We're gonna have to do something about. It. How long has that been out? Um, I think they introduced that um, last year. Um, this year at the shot show. Okay. Because I was I was talking to Steve Lauer about it at the shot show. So. Oh, okay, that's the guy from Duraco. That's that's the owner. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cerakote just came out with a gloss black that's kind of like the deep, deep blacks that uh, you get on some of the nicer guns, but they don't have anything that resembles bluing. Okay. Right. Now, I know that you did some other stuff to the uh, 700. You want to walk us through that? Because you, I, I didn't even really know people did this, but you said that you blueprinted it. Yeah. Do you want to explain what that is to us? Basically what you do. Yes, accurizing is basically what it is. Uh, basically, you take the gun, completely strip it, and then you remove the barrel from the chassis or from the receiver. This one, there's a recoil lug in here, and this is what takes the brunt force of it when you pull the trigger. Okay. Um, the one that comes in the firearm from Remington is a .178. That's your typical size. This one has a .25 in it, which is much thicker, much stronger. It's just a more accurate, it doesn't flex at all like the 178 will. Um, okay. We actually trued the face of the receiver, trued the face of the barrel. I had to inlet the uh, barrel farther for the one or the uh, 250 recoil lug. Once we set everything up, the headspace between, uh, well, I shouldn't say headspace. The bolt to barrel space is two thousandths of an inch. You get a piece of dirt in there, you're going to have a hard time closing this one. This one's more for going out on the range and long distance shooting. It's not really for hunting and stuff like that. So it's got a real tight barrel to bolt um, gap between. It's only two thousandths of an inch. And once you tighten everything up like that, then you have to go in and reset the depth of the chamber. Okay. This one has been set so that it's a, just barely uh, the go gauge in it falls. So it's real, real tight. Everything up, it just accurizes it more. Okay. 
I mean, it started out as a 26 inch barrel. Okay. I shortened it to 21, threaded it. We put a, a silencer co muzzle brake on it, and I run either a hybrid or a harvester big bore can on this one. Okay, so um, a couple things. One, how long does that take? <laughs> um, do that? I can act if I get in the shop and start start to finish. I can do one in a day. In a day, okay. Mm -hmm. And then what does that cost if someone wants to do that to their gun? Accurizing the receiver is anywhere from uh, 200 to 250, depending on recoil lug, depending on whether it's a Winchester, uh, Remington, uh, Savage. We can do it to all of them. Um, turning the barrel and adding the muzzle brake on the front of it, you're looking at somewhere between 150 and 175 with the brake. So, okay. Yeah, and so what kind of um, you know what kind of performance differences do you see out of that? What is it? Uh, as you notice, the optic is not here. Yeah. Okay. So you haven't My, you haven't tested this it yet. one has just just been finished. I'm waiting for. I've got a uh, Vortex five by twenty five by fifty PST Gen two coming for it. Uh, okay. Should be here in a week or two. From what I understand, they told me they were on back order. So as soon okay. as I get here, I'll test this one. Last one I did like this, um, we set up in 6.5 Creedmoor. It wound up with a proof research barrel on it, and we're pushing an eighth MOA at 100 yards. Okay. That's impressive. <laughs> uh, uh, and 6.5 Creedmoor, you said, right? That's, yes. that's yep. with hand loads, I guess, too, right? No, that is with the factory match Hornady loads. Wow. Hmm. It, that's now it is, <laughs> it is match ELD. The new uh, extra low dat drag rounds. That's wow. what we were using in it. That's cool. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So definitely something that you think is worth doing, right? Oh, yeah. If you're into precision shooting, if you want to be able to pinpoint a thousand yard shot, yes. Okay. Th this is a 308 that I built to shoot a thousand yards. Most 308s will not accurately shoot a thousand yards. Yeah. So if you let's say you get a 700 and then you because I'm trying to what what is the price of a 700 like stock? What uh, are we looking at? This one started out of the box at uh, right around six hundred dollars, five ninety nine. Okay, so six hundred and SPS then yes, varmeter. Okay, so then if it's like six hundred, then to do this kind of work to really step it up like that without doing the seracoding, obviously, then where does that kick you up to? Um. If you use the factory stock and it is a, a decent one of their stocks, you're probably at between a thousand and twelve hundred dollars to do all the work. Really? Now I've got an H and S precision stock on it. Um, it's got a Harris bipod on it. I've done a few extra things to it. I've got a bottom metal on it so that it will accept magazines instead of being a stock mat the internal magazine. Mm -hmm. I've done a few other things to this to increase it too. Oh, okay, cool. And then uh, did you do a trigger or any? I have not. This one will have a Timmy trigger in it, Timmy trigger in it when it gets done. Okay. Um, right now it's just a factory uh, X-Pro. Okay. What do you think about that, baby face? Uh, I've, I've wanted to build a, a Shrewd 700 for a while. I just haven't, you know, thrown the time at it. The other problem is I don't have a lathe, so... To like true all your faces and everything, you make a truly nice blueprinted gun. You have to have a nice lathe. Yeah, so that's one reason why I haven't undertaken that project. So it's, it's a hell of a project. <laughs> or, or a friend with a lathe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Walter, you're gonna have to let me use yours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, either either Walter or oh, well, I don't know if Don will let us. Yeah, you're making assumptions here. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't want <laughs> you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I know, mouth. Hank is like zooming <laughs> things up in here. Yeah, being, I know, I know, I'm being pushy, but we, <laughs> but I'm sure the folks out there. Would hey, like baby to face, see we'll just, we'll just put it on Hank's uh, plastic. We'll be all set. Oh it's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, we'll that, that, yeah. That black American <laughs> Express card that I don't have. <laughs> Is that a racist thing? <laughs> no, 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 no. In this case, a Black American Express card is an awesome thing. <laughs> yeah, it's an awesome thing. I I don't have one. <laughs> I don't think there's any way in hell Lola would want me to have one of those things either. I couldn't so, have one of those things. 
Yeah, uh, even if I wanted to, I don't think because she doesn't want me walking around being able to buy whatever the hell I want. <laughs> I'll just be coming home all the times. So I'll like just come home with an Aston Martin. <laughs> just like <That's> all. <laughs> yeah, I'll just show up at the house. <laughs> you know, that's go, Yeah, I'll just go to the Aston dealership and be like, yeah. At least yeah. you come home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll be let in. Oh, okay. You know, so yeah, he'll be standing on the porch <laughs> with his hundred thousand dollar car, three hundred thousand dollars. Sleeping in your Aston Martin. That's what. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So do you guys have any questions? I think the 700 is pretty cool. You said you could do that to uh, other um, bolt, bolt action guns? Yeah, I can do that to any. I was just watching one of our comments. One of the guys was saying that he has a 700 and 260. That's my next round. That's the next barrel that I'm going to. The 260 round is basically a 308 that has been necked down. They use regular Winchester 308 cases and okay. then neck it down to a basically a 243 bullet. Ooh. And just go yeah, faster. They are they are every bit of a mild gun if you load them right. Okay. Okay. I know that's I, I, I shoot with a guy that, that is uh he's a Hitron sniper for the Coast Guard, and he has one. And his will shoot a mile with no issue. Yeah, I think Jackson Oldman, that's Jackson that's saying that. And he says he's getting almost 3150 feet per second. Yeah. Yep. They are yeah. moving. Okay. That's pretty cool. What kind of what's the weirdest guns you've built? Me? Yeah. And you've guns? done some you've done some some uh you're into different rounds and stuff like that, different calibers. Yeah, um, I've built an AR in 2545 sharps. It's basically they take a regular 5.56 five, case, uh, spread it out to a 25 caliber. They're pushing 29 to 3,000 feet a second with those. Uh, that's the sharps round that you can buy the barrels. Yeah, that's, it uses yeah. all the same uh, magazines and bolts and everything that a standard AR does. It's just that it's 25 caliber. It's a pretty cool little round. Yeah, we've, we did some, um, the rest of us here, we've done some testing on that. Uh, from Sharps, uh, you know, Sharps is like I heard they've already started moving into their factory here in Florida. Yeah, I've heard they're moving too. Yeah, where, where, where's where are they located in Florida? Um, isn't it in the Stewart area? Yeah, I they're down say? by Jupiter or Stewart or something like that. Yeah, down on the, uh, <laughs> the East Coast. I still got to get a hold of them. Yeah, I think we need to take a trip over there, guys. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that the one I built that is a beautiful gun. Uh, yeah. That was actually built for one of the guys in the shop. Oh, okay, cool. So who was that? Who was that? Chris. When oh. Chris was still working with us before. He's, oh. In fact, I just talked to him today. He's just finishing up all his Coast Guard stuff. He's oh. trying to be a gunner. Oh, cool. Okay. So um, I, you know what? Lola is, probably, is reminding me that I never even, like, introduced you to Walter. So I don't know if you've. I don't know if you've ever heard. Hey, Walter. Yeah, Walter, <laughs> Walter is from. You, you, I mean, obviously, you've met Babyface. But uh, Walter is from Safety Harbor Firearms, and um, you know they make a, they make a, a couple of things, but they make a fifty upper that goes on an AR lower. I don't know if you've ever seen anything keg like 12. that. Yeah, they make that the keg twelve. Me a little bit, huh? Um, that scares me a little bit. That much power on an AR, a standard AR lower. Uh, it all, works. Yeah, all I'm the lower, sure. all the lower does is act as fire fire control. That's it. That's it. All the recoil and everything's taken yeah, in the upper. never, never broke one, never cracked one. All right, I, I, I just yeah, it, no, it's, that's what everybody thinks. It's like, how can that take it? And it, it takes it just fine. I mean, um, I was that I, before I rushed in here, I was test firing rifles at the shop. So, <laughs> and that <laughs> yeah, upper, that that upper that I'm shooting, that I'm using the test fire, probably has now at about, oh, it's probably got three or four hundred uppers on it that it's had fired wow. or more, and. They, you they mean get, the lower? They get yeah, the lower, yeah, the lower. Mm -hmm. They get they get wear from going off and on. Yeah, and, and the pins going the pins. in and out. Yep. But as far as um, breaking or cracking, no. Hey, next time you need to test fire some weapons, give me a call. I'll be more than happy to drive you. <laughs> 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 you I knew that was coming next. <laughs> uh, Actually, I'll, Walter Walter comes down and sees us every now and then. So I mean, you're you're not that far from uh, where we're at. So no, no. I used yeah. to work on in Port Charlotte. Or I mean, uh, Port Richie. So oh, that's okay. not far from where he is. That's yeah. only a few no, miles away. Yeah. 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 Just, Walt, go ahead. Just down the road a piece. Yep. Yeah. 
So I think what you what uh, what you guys we were talking about this the other night. What you guys do is there's a beefier hammer, right, Walter? Yeah, it's a little was well, a little bit different design. It's a little bit heavier, and then a heavier hammer spring, and um, it uses a stock AR trigger because the way that it cocks with that cam and the bolt carrier, mm -hmm. um, you can't use these aftermarket trigger packs and stuff, unfortunately. And that's actually a safety feature in that cam preventing from going off out of battery, but um. Cause you don't want a 50 cal to go off out of battery no that's kind of <laughs> ugly you don't want anything to go off out of battery but you really don't want a, a quarter stick of dynamite going off out of battery um but um <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it, it's it's um it's it was it's built as a i would say like a fun gun it's not really built as a, a you know like a target rifle so to speak but i've got people shooting thousand plus yards with decent ammo and hitting what they're aiming at so yeah that's not a bad thing at all yeah if you if you want to get into a 50 because what like if you go buy a barrett or something like that what are you looking at Ten thousand. Depends whether you're getting the 82 or the 107 yeah well entry even a bolt guns entry level bolt guns probably about 5500 so. yeah yeah um mm. and nice uh, for an upper i start at 1450 so you know yeah that's <laughs> that's a big difference <laughs> yeah yeah and and so, I have customers that have mine and have Barrett's, and they tell me mine just shoots just as well as a Barrett does. So, um, yeah, you know, I guess it all depends whether you want to have like the horse on your AR-15 or you don't care. <laughs> yeah, and the how horse make. The, how, how long if, everybody, the if everybody knew that that Colt doesn't make all their parts, they wouldn't buy that that idea. But you know, yeah. mm -hmm. it's just kind of like Chevy, Ford, Ferrari. You know, same thing. Yeah. yeah. How long yeah. is the barrel? Um, we do three different barrel lengths. We do an 18, a 22, and a 29. Um, try not to, when you get, well, what they say is between, between 29 and 36, all the powders burn up anyway. So, yeah. Um, 29 is about the, the end of it, and it's that's your distance barrel. Yeah. And, you know, I get people who want, oh, you make me a 42 inch barrel. I said, <laughs> no, that's what the what? That's what the military uses. And oh, I'm like, well, okay. this ain't a machine gun. So, you know, I, you know I, but yeah, no, 29 is as long as we do. Um, and then you yeah. are, you are going to be doing a 16, right? Because that's yes. the Hank. That's the Hank. The Hank. Yeah, that's, yes. what, that's the Hank. The Hank is coming. I, when, <laughs> when I get, when I get the, uh, I'm supposed to get like serial number 001. I will. For the Hank. <laughs> and I will paint it up special just for you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh oh. I don't. I don't like the way you said that. Well, you told me what you like color wise. So prison oh, pink. Know. Yeah. No. But when you say you know, the way you just said, specially for you, I know that is. Well, I'm not going to make it obnoxious. I have, people oh. are going to see it. I mean, uh -huh. you know, not too okay. obnoxious. Anyway. <laughs> no. 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 Don't go. I like that. Pink for Hank. No, no, no. Hey, I'll, I'll put I'll put your initials on the side or something. Your name in rhinestones or something. Make there you go. go. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Listen, I have to actually shoot this with other gun dudes. Okay, yeah, we don't. gotta have the bling. <laughs> we'll be dazzle it for you. Yeah, don't don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass me. Now, like now, for example, you know, American Gun Chick. Yeah. You know, yeah. I gotta I gotta talk to him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can bedazzle. You can bedazzle that. Oh, you know, she'd be going cute. for that now. I know yeah, that's that. cute and everything, but I don't really want to be up there, <laughs> you uh, know, we'll, with a we'll, pink gun, and definitely we'll give you, not we'll, a fifty. I'll make sure yours is manly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Revan Ulfair says FDE with a mohawk. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Put man. a mohawk on. Okay, I can't really, I can't really argue putting a mohawk on it. We can get some shag <laughs> carpet and glue it to the picketing rail. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> wait a second. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no thank you. That's an idea. You can wait, hold on idea. a second. No. You know what? Don't let these guys be the committee on putting that gun together. <laughs> I just got an idea. I could kind of, yeah. No, don't do it. Don't do Walter, it. Walter, you need any more ideas for him? Give me a call. <laughs> okay. We'll come up with something. Okay. okay. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't like the direction you guys are going on the hang. <laughs> Okay, we got to butch up the Hank as much he's as got possible. The fur, he's got the furriest Picatinny rail in existence. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got to. The, the Hank has to be butch, okay? It will be let's butch. Just, let's just, yeah. No, let's just, butch. <laughs> butch. Yeah. Like Wanda Butch. Wanda. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. So you know what I think would be cool though. It would be cool for us to get together like a think tank and and you know put some guns together. Us sure. guys here. I know Walter's busy building guns, but he's got lots of ideas and and tools and stuff like that. Walter's got a couple of CNC machines, you know. Um, and then Don, of course, has got uh, got some good ideas as well. And then me and Babyface, we're just geniuses. Uh, we're <laughs> yeah, 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 we're just. You're just the adjutant. Uh, yeah. I'm definitely not a, a B slash C student in college. <laughs> why, why am I seeing brains and brawn here? The two guys. Yeah, we we have good ideas, right? We have good ideas. Talking about it are the brains. Is that how well, it works? We do. Yeah, we, we have good ideas. I think the next good idea is to make a parts kit for a Groza. Just throwing that out there, Walter. Yeah, I'm going to work on the Groza, yeah. Because <laughs> I want one. <laughs> I might have to make a couple. Yeah, um, if you're going to do it, don't I will, just make I will, yeah. SDR, I will send in my tax stamp. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to do it, don't make one or two. You know? Well, no. So no, why, don't you, why don't you guys tell Don about this, uh, The the uh, what you're doing, what you're working yeah, on? Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here going, okay, what's this one you're talking a gro about? A Groza, a OC-14 Groza. It's a Russian. Basically, they just take an AK and make it into a bullpup. So um, behind, the, behind the receiver, they just put a flat little – um, butt plate, and mm -hmm. then it runs out. It runs out past the uh, um, the barrel extends just past the uh, gas port, and they chop it short or put a put an attachment for a, a can, and then it has a sight that comes up, kind of goes up high, kind of looks like a carry handle a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the idea was when they designed it was to use seventy percent of the existing AK seventy four parts to make a bull pop and, and make a bull pop. Right, right, right. Hmm. So since then they did it in. Uh, 54539 they did it in 76239 and they've done it in that that other nine millimeter some nine by something or other funny nine by nine by 23 largo yeah well one of that yeah whatever that is yeah um the one that they that they put the cans on that on those other the guns. suppressed ones and those are yeah. i wish we could get some of that ammo because that ammo is well, supposedly um i heard cool. that um i, I read some place that uh, wolf Wolf was going to start bringing some of that in or something. Somebody. I would love to see that. It's the same one that the uh, VSS uses, I think. Yeah, yeah. Give me some specs uh, on it. I can get 9 by 27 cases. 9, nine by we'll 39 just... is what it is. Oh, it's 9 yeah. by 39? Yeah, it's a longer case. 9 yeah. by 39. Wait, so which which caliber were you guys planning on working on that? Uh, I was, was going to do, I I was was do 74 five. myself. Yeah, yeah. That would... Yeah, that'd be what I would want. Yeah, I've, yeah. Got, I've got a couple Bulgarian kits that are just sitting to – that can be used. Yeah, that thing is sexy. I think it's sexy. We put it's, a link in yeah, the. Just, you guys can yeah. like it, uh, Don. If you check chat in the, I just put a link in the chat to the picture of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, look at. That. There's a link up there. It's it's pretty it's, sexy looking. It's neat looking. It looks like straight out of like Cold War Russia. I don't know. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> one of the, one of the neat parts about it, that picture you put up, looks like something. That's something kind of. It's kind. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's it, just it, the one from the wiki. Right. Um, yeah. Well, cool oh, you really got to move the trigger. Wow, that's kind of unusual. It is. Yeah. It's really a, there's some better picks where it shows it. I've got some picks where they show a part. Yeah, I mean, if you yeah, if you just Google it, you there's a there's a yeah. there's a lot of different variations here, right? right that you right, could right. go. Yeah. They made a yeah. they made a, 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 I also, a. Go ahead. I was just gonna say I also would like to sit down and if we're able to put together one of the um, I had the PBS seven whatever the suppressor is um because i know there's some some people that are putting that have um like a fake suppressor kit that you can buy and then you can form one it and turn it into that russian styled suppressor okay i'd yeah. love to make one of those too like form one one yeah russian cans are super simple inside they don't yeah. they yeah. just take sheet metal and just bend it and in put a it in stack yeah. and they have like wire running yeah they don't they don't they don't care about it being like uh, quieter than the other guy they just yeah. want it a little quieter you know? <laughs> exactly. yeah yeah. Um, take, by the take way, take the flash away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yep, yep. Joe Carpenter says Cerakote boobies. No. <laughs> no. Ow. You have to take it at two hundred degrees. I think there's going to hurt. Two fifty. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of, that's above boiling, man. Those yeah. things might. No, he's talking about Cerakote boobies for my gun. That's oh, put them on the side of your gun. Okay. Yeah. No. That's no not there's, there's still we, we can take care of that. Mr. Subguns no. is still jonesing from my twenty millimeter. So. Yeah, you might you might have to go dig it out. What do you think about bullpups, Don? Are you a bullpup guy? I I like bullpups. I am more of a SBR guy than I am a bullpup guy. I have a it's I'm so used to loading a magazine up front. 
-hmm. it's hard for me to load a magazine behind my trigger finger. <laughs> Just not used to it. Right. But yeah, it is it is something that you have to be, you know, but you're not against the bullpups per se. Oh no, no. Bullpups have their place. They're they're great close quarter guns. I mean, being that short and that versatile, yeah, they're great close quarter guns. Yeah, I, you know, I can take my AR and 300 blackout and stuff an eight and a half inch barrel on it. And I'm a good close quarter yeah. gun too. Something like yeah. this, right? Nice and tiny little crank. <laughs> yeah, there. Well, can you imagine? Okay, your crank right there. Take yeah, that go crank. ahead and hold up your crank, baby. Sure, hold that up again. Yeah. If you if you if you, if you basically take the if you basically take the stock off and cut the barrel off ahead right for the gas port, you got a Groza. Yeah. And yeah, move, so. move move the grip forward underneath the handguard. You got a Groza. There so, you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I think it will be cool to do some kits on that, you know. Well, it would. It, it's going to take some time, but yeah, I'm yeah. I'm totally down to to work on it <laughs> if, if you need something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, maybe we need to put together a think tank and come up with, uh, you know, <laughs> I'd like to see a nice nine millimeter bullpup. <laughs> you know, that would be cool. Nice wow. nine millimeter bullpup out there that's not ugly. I, I could tell you before I went for AK USA is um nine millimeter AK. That yeah. 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 I, I wish they I wish we could import the um what are they called? The, the nine mil AK parts kits. Oh, yeah. oh um um I can't think what they're called. The one with the cylindrical drum mag. No, those two. Those are really cool too. Um those are the uh oh god, somebody in chat can yell it out. I can't think of what that's called. Yeah, I don't yeah, I have no uh, uh, mag on the front. Yeah, it's my uh hmm. Hold on, I'll look it up. There's so it, do, it does look like it does look like um, MDRs are going out there to some people. Wow! So Desert Tech really? put up, finally going to get these things. Well, shipped. Desert Tech put up something on August fourteenth on their blog, saying that the first person, uh, I think, um, a gentleman by the name of Derek Johnson, he was the first guy to pre-order, so they surprised him with one <laughs> on the fourteenth. <laughs> So that's like a couple of days ago. That's like what two days ago, on the fourteenth. So maybe there's maybe he got surprised with that, and then like we're hearing that there's a couple of more. Um, uh, and then it, are there news? Let me see. People are saying that they're in Utah stores as well. Yeah, it looked like I was looking at the bullpup forum, and it, it looked like there's some that are shipping out. The next batch will go out in September. Ship dates like mid September. Yeah, well, that's kind of like when I got my Shrike. After waiting nine years, <laughs> nine years, <laughs> I just I let it sit on the box for a while and I just looked at the box. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't Afraid even to take it out because you thought it might be empty still. <laughs> I didn't even open it up. I just like, I can't believe it. It's actually here. So I was like, oh, look at that. Yeah, it hasn't been that long with the MDR. What's it been like? Oh, two, man. three years, maybe. Oh my god. Yeah, it's not really that long. I mean, I told you guys, Walter, you and I, we fired them at yeah. Joshua. Yeah, and you they know. had the they had the wrong ammo in the gun. Bison. Uh, yes, yeah, supposedly. <laughs> yeah, allegedly. PP nineteen bison or the uh, oh the, the bison yeah yeah oh, the yeah. Vityaz is the um, the AK the nine mil AK that has like stick mags at the bottom. Right, 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 right. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. Kalishnikov USA is supposed to be making those here. I want. I would love to have a video. That's what they said it shot. So yeah. Um, yeah. Once again, that's a two weeks, two weeks thing too. That with the uh, Lishikov USA. Yeah, we'll see when uh, you know. I mean, probably by next shot show, we'll see some of this stuff. Hopefully, yeah. we'll see Hopefully, what's going yeah. on there. What's your um, what? You, what's your favorite kind of guns, Don? My favorite kind of guns. Yeah, I am bolt action long range. Nice. I, if I can reach out and touch it at seventeen hundred plus, that's what it needs to be. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so this is pretty much um, so that seven hundred that your dream gun you're working on, or do you have other stuff that you? No, no, no. That that seven hundred is my medium range gun. <laughs> okay. I've got a, uh, Sa a Savage Stealth three thirty eight Lapua. I was, I was just, just going to ask you about three thirty eight Lapua. <laughs> Gotta love it. Yeah, yeah, it's that one. That is. There was a guy on YouTube that I watched uh, about three weeks ago. Now, granted. Took him about nine shots to get there, but he hit a 24 by 24 steel plate at two miles with a 338. Jesus. <laughs> I can't even imagine what that looks like through your optic. It just well, has the other thing was is it wasn't like – I think he was shooting in a 20-mile-an-hour wind, oh. <laughs> and he was still able to hit it at two miles. Wow. 
Got to love the 338. Yeah. We've in our shop, we've got a guy that's selling a 338 378 Walther. Or excuse me, Weatherby. 338 378. The 378 cartridge dwarfs the 338 Lapua cartridge. 338 378 Weatherby Magnum. Well, it's built on a Weatherby uh, receiver. So so when you guys start and these people start squawking about how much 50 cal ammo costs. I'm gonna head. Them, I'm gonna head them over to that stuff. Yeah, three thirty eight yeah. Lapua is whew, what yeah. is it, ten twelve dollars a shot or something. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, what the three thirty eight Lapua? No, 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 no. That's only five dollars a shot. Yeah, that's that's not, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's always there's always something. is reload only. Yeah, there's no, nobody out there yeah. making this ammunition. You yeah. have to buy cases, yes. custom made from somebody, shape them, and yeah. size them, and yes. yeah, trim yeah. them, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Whenever yeah, yeah. people start talking about prices in the gun world, I, you know, I'm gonna tell you right now, you can never surprise me with the prices because there's always something more expensive than something else. Oh yeah, yeah. you know, there's always a gun. Like if you think this is the most expensive shotgun you've ever seen, then oh, someone wait, wait. shows you the two million dollar shotgun. You need to go to the Parazzi uh, booth at the shot show. If you want yeah, to exactly. Yeah. You know, those dudes. I've actually. Lola, what was those shotguns that we handled that like the pair of these shotguns were two million dollars or something? Oh Jesus. Uh -huh. yeah, it was two there's a picture I have on Instagram of me and Lola where each holding one of these shotguns. More than I will ever hold in my hands. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but there's always something like um, you know, people think um uh ten uh twenty twos are cheap. And then uh my friend um <laughs> William Bethards, that's a competitive shooter, he's got ten thousand dollar ten twenty uh not ten twenty twos, but twenty twos. You know, he's got 22s that are 10,000, 10 Olympic grand. level. Yeah. Well. Yeah, you know. So you doesn't need that. <laughs> yeah, there's always something more expensive. Okay, so um, Don, uh, folks out there, I think Mr. Some Guns wants to know, do you hunt? Do I hunt? Yes. I, I, my, <laughs> I love it. My oldest daughter lives in Colorado, and later this year I will be going out there for elk. Nice. Okay, sweet. So, okay. Are you taking, are you taking the Remington? Yeah, the Remington's going to go with me. I've got an a outfit out there that they do what they call extreme prairie dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not allowed to take a shot less than 850. Oh, God. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah. Okay, so wait, wait a second. The prairie dog has to be for a prairie dog. Yes. 850 <laughs> yards away? That's insane. What kind yeah, of scope all, are you using? That is, yeah, no, that's some real skill right there. All the guys that go out there, uh, I went to visit my daughter several months back, and my son-in-law is like, come on, let's go to this gun sh shop. And I'm like, gun shop? Hey, <laughs> I'm always <laughs> up for a gun shop. We walk in there, and they had two walls of rifles. One entire wall was all custom-built long guns, 22 250s, 223s. I mean, just long-distance precision guns. And then they had everything else on the other wall. There were half as many regular guns as they were long distance. I got talking to them and they're like, yeah, these guys that shoot 22 250s, 400, 500 yards, that's as far as they're going. He goes, we're not allowed to take a shot less than 850. <laughs> oh my goodness. But they're shooting 300 wind mags. They're shooting 338s, stuff like that with good scopes. And best part is, is you get paid by the farmers for prairie dogs. He goes, but we can only usually give them the tail and bottom feet. The rest of the <laughs> <laughs> they're liquefied. So what? So what's the, what scopes are they using? Do you know what kind of scopes uh, are they using out of that? What what? Um, a lot of the guys are either using night force scopes or they're using the uh, vortex. I'm going to be using a vortex five by twenty five by fifty. Um, nice. I had thought about stepping up to the golden eagle, which is the ten by forty by uh, ten by forty by fifty six. But I may grab one of the golden eagles to put on it before I go out there. Okay. Okay. So that's so either Night Force, Night Force has got some good. Night stuff. Force has got great scopes. Um, even Nikon's got some some of their bigger new scopes that are coming out. They're not too bad for the price point. Um, but yeah, U.S. Optics. Uh, you you got to have a good scope for this. Got to have good glass. Okay. Um, and let me see, what's the, uh, okay, so um, someone wants to know, did you replace the chassis on the Stealth? I think Jackson Ullman says his buddy hated the chassis. No, um, I actually answered him. 
I did not oh. like the stock that came on the chassis. I don't mind the chassis. Reason I don't mind the chassis is because mine's set up on a bipod, and I've got a bipod on the rear stock. So the only part of the gun I'm actually touching is the trigger and pistol grip. It's not okay. like I'm trying to carry this gun hunting. This is a this is a bench rest for the most part gun. Okay. Um, where you set up on the ground or set up on a shooting mat, something like that. Chassis didn't bother me. So I just put a, a, a good stock on it. I put one of the uh, Magpul. God, I can't think of it. They use all kinds of letters for their stocks. But it's adjustable cheek, adjustable back. Um, and it's a fixed position stock. It's not collapsible. It just has adjustable pieces to it. So I put a bipod or a monopod on the bottom of it, and it shoots great. Yeah. So what, uh, what's your favorite hunting round? Favorite hunting round? Yeah. It depends on what you're hunting. Yeah. yeah. White-tail deer, 308. Sense. Muley yeah. deer from long distance, 300 wind mag. Okay. What do you like to hunt the most? What's your, you know? I like hunting whitetail. Uh, this will be my first ever elk hunt. Can't wait for that. I, I really want to take the 338 and take probably, uh, I'd like to get one at seven, between seven and a thousand yards. Okay. That's what so, I want to do. So why do you like the uh, whitetail? Is it just like the meat is delicious? Love the meat. Okay. God, I, <laughs> there are so many good recipes with whitetail. Okay. <laughs> been, eating yes. it since I, been eating it since I was knee high. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. See, I've, I've never been hunting, so, uh, you know, I have no idea. The, we oh. will change that. Yeah. Yeah. We need, been, we need to go hunt something. talking about doing like boar hunting or something. This is here in Florida. That's pretty common. Tell me about it. Let's get, let's get the night visions out and oh. take the ARs and okay. go hog hunting, oh. man. Sure. Okay. Then, yeah. Let me just get the night visions out. <laughs> Hey, face. Uh, did you give me back my night vision? Uh, I, I let me let me. It's yeah. in the pile, back in the, the corner. Night yeah. vision or thermal? I have it. Uh, yeah. Okay. I but, have uh, both. Okay. Which what uh, what do you have? Well, for night vision, I've just got one of the old ATNs. Works really good. For thermal, I've got one of the Leopold. It's not a mounted scope, but I actually use it for. I look through with, through the thermal to find it, and then I can just aim in with the night vision. It works really good. Oh, okay. What do you have, Walter? What do you um, – I think you um, showed us something once, right? Yeah, you, I have an uh, uh, Elcan Spectra. Um, oh, it's a weapon God. sight. It's not, it's not, cur it's not current, current <laughs> weapon sight, but it's – it, it, It's not the Spectra DR, is it? Uh, you want to see? Yeah, because I've wanted a Spectre DR for oh, way too long. It's a one to four with a little flip lever on the side. Let me just get it out. Yeah, for we you. might have to pull. We may have to pull it out here. Oh, yeah, let me I give me a yeah. give me a second. Pull it out, Walter. Pull, pull it out. out. I'll go retrieve time, it from the vault. Their yeah. Spectre DR is like yes. starting Walter, price pull, like uh, uh, eighteen hundred dollars. Oh, okay. He, he no. left the headsets on so he can't hear us. Yeah. See yeah. now, when I hit the lottery, I will have FLIR. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got to have the thermal flare. So I've, I've wanted to build up a PVS-14. Because um, you can buy the tube and then buy, like, the parts kit and build yeah. separately. Um, but, again, oh, okay, that is pretty old. I'll give you that. That's very old. Oh, hold on. Let's lock, let's well, lock this well, in, Walter. Well, hold it up. Hold it up. Let's see. Okay. It's not. It's not were you even born when that came out? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you wise guys. Yeah. Hey, I was going to let you our wall. Don't, don't get started on the old jokes. By the way, Walter, did you see the thumbnail that I made for? Um, there was a video with you in it. Hold on, let me find it. I'm going to tell you which oh, episode. Did I have my clothes on. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yes, you did. So is that okay. that's night, not thermal, right? No, that's this is ther this is thermal. Oh, that's thermal. Okay. This is thermal. So laugh all you want. Yeah, that's not that's not as big as I thought. That's like ten thousand dollar thermal optic. Yeah, this that's smaller than thing, I thought it was going to be. When I got this thing, I started searching around to see what it cost, and I found one site, and they wanted thirteen grand for this thing. Yeah, here, I was so. say. Hey, I'm, going, I'm going hunting with Revan. He's got a twenty thousand dollar night vision optic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's let's invite him. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. You want to go? Gotta, uh, Wait, find out where he is. <laughs> Somebody find out where he is. Because he said he's their <laughs> IR is what that is. And yeah. this has a uh, this has a video out plug too, so he can hook it up. And uh, the guy that I got it from mentioned something about his unit. <laughs> yeah, his unit. I don't know what you're talking about? And, uh, 
um, they would have to get approval before they made some shots. So, um, oh, you know. here's, one kind of, here's one on arms list for $4,500 in Salt Lake City, Utah. One of these? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, it's more than I can afford. <laughs> all, it cost, all it cost me was an upper. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, good so, Lord. So, oh. go continue laughing. All right, continue laughing. <laughs> yeah, so I I, inv I want to invite everyone to go look at episode, I believe it was episode 39. Just look at the thumbnail of episode 39. Oh, dear, what happened? Look at the thumbnail. <laughs> oh, dear, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Just check out the thumbnail of episode 39. So go look at the... Oh, it, wait a minute. It, I got Carly Cox here. Forget about thumbnail. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Yeah, if you want to, um, if you really want to see, here, let me... Da -da 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 -da. Okay, hold on. All right, I'm I'm on your episode 39. How long do I have to wait? <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on. Let me maybe because I, I gave you guys a link to the. Let me give you a link to look at all the. Uh, maybe that'll work better, where you guys can just see the thumbnails of it. Because I don't think you can see a thumbnail out of that. But I no. want. Uh, so I just put in another link there. Just look for episode 39. So go to my channel. <laughs> How old is? <laughs> 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 go to my channel <laughs> and click on like to look at all the you know all the what we've uploaded lately and then look at episode 39 oh uh, you dirty dog yeah oh, you, t you told me you were going to do that so i said yeah, yeah. i didn't care about it. yeah i had to do some photoshop <laughs> oh, no. you got me in grandpa something or other <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just i just put a new link up there so if you click on that link I'll have to look at it here. Let's yeah, see. that will, uh, you know, that will show you, that will show you all the different episodes. And then if you scroll down to episode 39, you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> just, hey, you know, it looks like Father it. Time. <laughs> <laughs> just having a little fun. Just a little fun, Walter. Yeah. Yeah. And remember, what comes around goes around, baby. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Now, I will, get, uh, <laughs> I will get you. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm probably going to regret it, but it was fun. It was fun. Oh, how old is fun? <laughs> 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 that's funny. Uh, uh, that's a, do you know how much Photoshopping time that was? Uh, to get all that big, give me that ZZ Top beard, you know? Yeah, that what it is? That's a lot of Photoshopping that went into that. Oh, 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 oh. So, yeah, you know what? Revin, uh, Revin was even saying earlier that he's got designs and stuff like that. He's tempted to send his designs. Um, you know, definitely make sure all your stuff is, like, copywritten, trademarked, or whatever you do with Sending designs. It's, well, if, it's, if it's something that's patentable, and it really is, then that's another story, but um, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. You know, so, are you open to look at designs and stuff like that? I'm always meeting guys that want to uh, build, you know, that have ideas and stuff like that. You know, I like helping people. So, if there's people out there that have developed things, you've got a prototype, definitely let us know. Especially if you have a working prototype. Yeah, hey, well, Walter, yeah. Mr. Yes. Some Guns is like begging for the 20 millimeter. <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, come on, Walter, please. All right, I'm well, going. Walter I'm showed going, the barrel yesterday. <laughs> I'm going mute. I'm muting myself. Hang uh, on. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh-oh. Yeah, so he showed the barrel yesterday, Don, and it was ridiculous. I don't you you went to dinner, babyface. Uh, yeah, I don't think I saw it. You missed it. You missed the barrel. We're going to make him pull out the barrel again cuz it's insane. But he, that was at the end of uh, last night's episode, so whatever, I don't know what episode. What episode is this? Someone's going to have to tell me what episode. Oh, we're on episode 46. <laughs> Damn, we've done 46 episodes already? <laughs> that's, you know, that's some work, man. We've been putting in work. Let me remind everyone watching right now. we got a bunch of people watching. Okay, click the like button. Okay, definitely make sure you hit the subscribe button and share this video on social media so that we can get, you know, we can get more people coming in here, hanging out with us. They can see what they're missing. This is going to have to be special. i got to get paid to bring this shit out. This is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's lock it on Walter here so we can see. Look how big the freaking magazine is. <laughs> is, this a, is it a Lottie? What is it? Lottie, yeah. Lottie. Okay. So, you What's that, about three rounds? <laughs> yeah, how many rounds, Walter, in that magazine? This holds ten. Oh, wow. Holy Okay. Double stack. Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> That's why it's 10. <laughs> Double stack, single feed. So let's see here.
You ever had anybody know that smell of surplus magazines oh, when they come out of yes. a? <laughs> oh it. yeah, God, I love that smell. <laughs> 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 It's like that new car smell, but it's that, that old gun smell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it anything like napalm in the morning? Well, so, <laughs> so is this a, is this a Lottie parts kit or is it a? Well, okay. I, I bought the I bought the the gun, um, and a new barrel. So I had to fit the barrel to the gun. So I guess so you is, could say that. Is this thing fireable? It will be soon. Ah. Oh. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Look at that. I hear him grunting. Shit. Look at that. That's a beautiful beast. Look at that. Oh, oh. Lord. What's that receiver way? <laughs> That's oh. so beautiful. A lot. A lot. Come on, guys. You got to share. Walter's showing the Lottie. You got to share that, man. So, so that's your next squirrel gun, right? <laughs> Definitely some guns. You got to be sharing this. Look at that thing. Squirrel with a 22. He just removes the tree under the squirrel. <laughs> Holy shit. That's heavy. Um, yeah, I don't know. The Lottie is um, definitely not, not definitely not something. You, it's a two man gun. They usually have our two or three guys carried around. So yeah, just hold that up for us again, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, so so, so ammunition. Yeah, just turn. Yeah, just turn it. Yeah. Turn it around the other way so we can see, like, yeah, we want to see all the... Some of us are never going to get to see this again, and so... And plus, your muscles look real sexy flexing there, Walter. So... Not ready to pass out. So, so what... <laughs> how do you even go about, like, shooting or owning that? Because you can't just reload 20 it's a, millimeter. It's a DD, first. Yeah, it's a, is, is each round considered a destructive device? Okay, so you can, like, reload the ammo somehow. Well, as long as the rounds aren't, like, explosive or anything. Yeah, just, just regular. Okay. If you just shoot solid, um, you take 20-millimeter, American 20-millimeter rounds, and you can turn them down a little bit, and you can use them. But I have a CNC lathe, so eventually we'll yeah. just make new projectiles. But um, Machine solid, solid copper. Rounds, <laughs> something like that or brass. I did, I did a 4-1. Um, God and, dang. You know, so that's a personal. Need, that's not a business rifle. That's a personal. Right, this is on my own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not... That that way, I don't have to keep it at the shop, so to speak. Oh, man, I've been I've been wanting. Uh, I've seen some guys recently do Form One destructive devices uh, for the M one hundred threes. You yeah. can get the 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 you just you can't sh obviously shoot explosives out of it, but you can right. shoot like uh, smoke grenades and whatnot. Well, which is like cool. what I showed the other night, I don't know if you saw it because you weren't around, but I've got one of those beehive rounds. A beehive round? No, I don't even know what that is. Oh, whoa! Oh, does it shoot like twenty two or something? Twenty two long rifle, yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so yeah, when you put that in the forty, then you got, you know. I yeah, I've been thinking about picking up a because you can pick up the um, the receiver itself, and it's not a destructive device until you put the barrel right, on this, it. This receiver by itself actually is just a Title One yeah. firearm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Show, See, show us the receiver again, Walter. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'll make it up to you. Look at that. So yeah, somebody, somebody, Just, chat. Tell me, what yeah. should I form? So what's the to... so the crack? That's how is that? That's, how you, you... that's how you cock it from the crack. Yeah, wow. you crank it around and and then you're okay. ready to go. So can you show us the barrel now? Can we see the barrel? Just for you, sweetie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank that's you. Fine. Thank you, my darling. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Hank, you are gonna owe him. <laughs> if it takes sweet talk. <laughs> I will see what I see the levels I have to go to for you people. Yeah. The magazine Yeah. Yeah, Lola, by the way, when you when you're done showing us the barrel, Lola wants you to show the receiver again. But yeah, here's the barrel. Check that out, dude. You got several out there. You got several guys out there going, I want to be Walter. Where the hell did you where'd you get that barrel from? Amazing. Did you mill that yourself? No, actually, um, the person I bought the um, the rest of it from, he had the barrels made. Okay. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with Anzio Ironworks. Yeah, I know the name. They do the 20 millimeter bolt guns. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see them on the internet. They got five million views or something like that, or yeah, five something like that. Um, I bought this from Mike. Yeah. He, he got the barrel and everything, so. So do you need like volunteers to help you put all this together? Because we can, we can get volunteers together to help you with this. Actually, you this guys can put it together. I want to pull the trigger. Right, exactly. <laughs> this, this is the kind of stuff where you don't need anybody bugging you when you're cutting. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? 
You only get one shot at it. So yeah. yeah. So someone's saying you're showing it upside down. Can you flip it? Can you flip the Lottie around so that we can see the magazine? This is what, magazine. this is Lola giving top these instructions. Load. The magazine goes on top, doesn't it? It's the yeah. top load. Yeah. I didn't so even think can about you, that. Yeah. Can you just do that again, Walter. Because Lola, this <laughs> is Lola. It this is not down. me. This that is Lola. Right. There you go. Yeah, okay, that's how it's top load. Yeah, I didn't even think it was yeah, top load. It's yeah, it's top load. load. It's top load. So you were yeah. you were showing it the right way. Yeah. So you uh, had top right load. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Can you can you flip it though for Lola? Lola wants it flipped. Lola wants it. I need you to I, juggle that, please. I swear this is not me. This is not me. This is Lola. Okay. This is Lola. Flip it for Lola. Only because I like Lola. That's why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just go ahead and flip it. Which way? Like the uh, yeah. Which way do you want it flipped, Lola? Come on. Is it? Are you happy now, Lola? How do you want this thing? How do you want? Okay. You want it this way, honey? Oh, this is okay. She's happy. She's happy. She says she's seen it. That's good. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right. There you go. Oh, okay. Lola's happy. Okay. You know. You know the song. Whatever Lola wants. Lola gets. Lola. Yeah. So there you go, Walter. Let's all give Walter a, a round of applause. Come on, people. Round of applause for Lola, for Walter. There, Walter has to come on. Clap it up because that was some serious. I so, don't think that much work has ever been done on a podcast. I'm guessing. I'm guessing your bullet trap cannot handle. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. no, it's a bullet mountain to stop that one. Yeah, exactly. That will be. That will not be tested in the shop. That's It'll true. go clean through your shop and like five others down the street. <laughs> that's yeah. Fifty cal's bad enough, but um, no yeah. um, that'll go up to the clandestine testing facility and and. Nice. Um, yeah, no, we had so how long is that Ocala think? National Forest bombing <laughs> range? <laughs> no, we've got we've got facilities. We've got facilities to what test it. What do you, so what are you missing to uh, complete that that whole deal, Walter? What do you need to get that up and going? I have to finish fitting the um the receiver threads to the barrel. I gotta do a little more thread tra thread chasing on those threads to get it to seat all the way down. And then um set the headspace. And then put the whole arrangement in the milling machine and do the gas port. Okay. Good. And then once the gas port's done, assemble it. Did you mention? Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if you want to say, but did you mention what you paid for it? Um, I paid. It was five thousand for the barrel and the receiver, everything. Yeah, for what you saw there. Yeah. That's not bad. No, it's not bad. No, actually, no, that's not bad at all. I mean, last last time at the creek. There was a there was a Ohio ordinance had a basically the same idea, um, but they had like an armor's kit with it and some more mags, and yeah. um, some stuff I'd never seen that come with a lottie and uh, it was like they wanted thirty five hundred for the for that you know minus a good barrel yeah, but, um, yeah. that was a heck of a deal but and I could have bought it too but I was like uh, do I need another lottie <laughs> <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yes you do if the question is do I need another you, twenty millimeter the answer is always yes can you yeah. have too many. <laughs> no, you cannot. Uh, you have two hands, right? I'm gonna have to. Make dual, it. I'm gonna wait, have to hold make on. It. Are you talking dual wielding? Can I'm gonna. Have oh yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Do <laughs> them up. <laughs> you gotta just stick them up in the air like this. I'm oh, gonna have boy. to make. A, I'm gonna have to make myself a special hand truck just to roll it around. Yeah. So. You're getting lots of claps in the comments, uh, Walter. Just so you know, you're getting lots of claps there. Now, um, let me tell you, like five thousand bucks for bragging rights. That's not oh. bad. And they're not—they're not like everyday common guns. No. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's rare. Yeah. The thing with it is that it's not—it's—it's—it's—it's it's, it's, it's just the ammunition you got to work to get. You know, everything you got to like load yourself. Um, what does it cost? Oh, you can't buy—you can't buy it. You have to build yeah, it. There's, there's, no, there's hardly any original ammo that's still yeah. available. Um, there's hardly any original cases that are still available. Things got to take like about a pound yeah. of powder per so, case. <laughs> Just so, the whole thing. Yeah. Reeves, um, Anzio Ironworks is making um, uh, stainless steel cases, which I have. A, I have a few of them, and um, so you got to load your own. You got to do it all yourself. And but and, I mean, if you got to be careful because you can blow yourself up really easy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so stainless cases reusable, or is it a one-time yeah, shot deal? Supposedly, he says you can get about three three times out of one. God so. dang! But you That's can. I mean, good. I imagine you can take one and. And lo uh, crank one out yourself on a CNC or something, right? Uh, the 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 cases, I guess I could, but uh, it'd be easier to let Mike let Mike make them. Okay. Yeah. But um, 
The time yeah. involved in making them may not be worth the price yeah. of just buying one. Yeah. yeah, he had a lot of he had a lot of trial and error getting it figured out to make the cases. So. Yeah. Plus, while your CNC machine is doing that, you could be you can be building other stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> this is this is from the Tyvin show. This is from the Tyvin show, Walter. Uh -oh. okay. He says, <laughs> for all your hard work and displaying it, you get a free T-shirt. From Safety ah. Harbor Firearms. <laughs> 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 just mail, just mail that T-shirt to yourself, Walter. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> okay, time and show. I don't. Uh, you, you, you know, I had to. I had to uh, put that up there. That's really cool, so, man. Walter, are you gonna single point sling that one, or are you actually gonna run <laughs> two points on it? <laughs> I'd have to grow about six feet tall to be able to. Sling <laughs> Because together, all together, it's it's probably pushing um, it's probably pushing so six uh, seven feet long. So <laughs> yeah, um, but listen, if you get an opportunity to get more of those now, I'm not Don. I'm sure Don will remind you. I am not authorized <laughs> to write checks for Big Daddy Guns, but <laughs> if you could get another one of those, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Tony's gonna want one. <laughs> So. Um, there's there's a lot there's a lot of videos out there's a few videos out in the internet showing people shoot them, but mm -hmm. I don't think there's anybody out there has ever done a mag dump with a twenty millimeter. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So we're gonna do that then. <laughs> Once I know it's shooting and it's working safe, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a ten round dump. I'm definitely gonna do it. So yeah, yeah. You gonna set that up against a concrete wall while you're doing it? <laughs> <laughs> Pull no, it from. No, the you're, you've got to build a sled, right? Because you did you say you have a sled or you have to no, build a sled? I'm Build, I'm gonna build kind of a. I want to build like a tripod arrangement where I can sit behind it and, and do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't want to lay in the dirt and do all that that monkey business. Yeah. So. We have to make an event out of that, man. We got uh, when when that's getting shot because <laughs> I don't know when you're gonna be shooting it again. I, I'm thinking that's gonna be like a running car engine shot. You know where you just mm, running. You yeah. Just it with, That'll work. Yeah. 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 We can make we can make those arrangements. Yeah. <laughs> We can definitely make those arrangements. We can get a running car, you know. I mean, because that would be awesome, man. We got to, we got to make that happen. Yeah, that's now on my bucket list. <laughs> so the fifty cal is the only caliber that will actually blow up a gas tank. Let's try the twenty. Twenty, oh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so what are you saying? Just get like a whole car and see what we could do to it. Well, shoot the engine and turn it around and shoot the gas tank and see how much of it we can send into the orbit. <laughs> that would be nice. That would be nice. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming you can make specialized rounds, right? Um, can you, right. or is that I'll like not rest. allowed? You could make, tr you could legally probably make tracers, but you you can't do anything else besides that. I mean, yeah. Chris B wants to know what you estimate it's going to weigh all put together. Oh, well, I I I could probably look it up on the interweb here. What it I was just about to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone, it's, it's going to be heavy. A lot of L39 yeah. weighs 109 pounds. Yeah. 109? Okay. 109 pounds. That I'm could fit. Probably, that could fit. I'm guessing that's unloaded. I, I doubt that's unloaded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's lighter than I thought you were going to say. Yeah, I, I, I thought it'd be heavier myself, but um, we'll see when it's all ready. I mean. How long have you been planning all this, putting this together? Well, I mean, I, I was. I, I bought it and I paid for it and I was working on the barrel and then I kind of I kind of like everything you set it aside and you don't get back to it until uh, yeah. um but um I just need to get back well the problem is is taking the time to set the whole thing up in the milling machine while I'm not making parts so that I can fill orders and and pay the rent you know things like that so um yeah so I got to I got to just uh um take the time to do it that I guess that's what it is so yeah no it's a great project man i mean if you can it'll be fun yeah, yeah if you need any help with it i definitely i volunteer get a, here's an idea they get another receiver somebody is talking about the 50 fat mac which is a mcmillan so it's a 20 millimeter casing neck down to a 50 BG. Yeah, yeah yeah i mean there's guys that, that actually do these down to 50 cal too i think but i don't know why you would want to do that because it's just no 50 cal is like shooting a 22 out of the thing yeah <laughs> Not uh, not the yeah, same. Need, not the same a, the twenty millimeter. Is yeah. there a suppressor for that? <laughs> I actually don't laugh. Mike, 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 and Anzio Ironworks makes one. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Look at his videos. Type in Anzio Ironworks and oh, check out his. Oh, Anzio Ironworks. Go Googling right now. I, know. I need to see this suppressor. On a Things got to look like a culvert going underneath somebody's driveway. <laughs> it's, it's, where, um, where is Anzio Ironworks? Where is that? He's down here by me. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, so this looks far. pretty bad. Oh, so he's yeah. local. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe we should get him to come on or something. Like I, don't that. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to get him on, really. I don't think. Oh, he's not like, he's not yeah. going to get on, on the internet. No, you have to get his tinfoil hat on and you don't feel like that. <laughs> oh, okay. So so yeah. he doesn't, he doesn't well, want like, us to like, share. We're talking about him on air. Does he mind that? Well, I Mike, mean, he's Mike, got a website. Mike's yeah. a good guy. Mike's a good guy. Oh, okay. Okay. He's, uh, he's, had, he's had some issues with stuff and, you know. Um, okay. Yeah, his shop mysteriously caught fire one year when he was at the shot show, and um, yeah, oh, it, was, it was a bad scene because he had a lot of cool stuff. So, oh, so so like some serious damage got done. Yeah, the whole place burned to the ground. Yeah, Jesus. Oh. Okay, wow. Lottie twenty millimeter suppressor, thirty two hundred dollars. That's cheap. Yeah, that's not. That's yeah, that's reasonable. Uh, twenty by one thirty eight loaded ammunition. He's selling for thirty five bucks each. Yeah, okay. you can probably figure you can probably figure Lottie Ooh. is like thirty dollars a shot. So, yeah. <laughs> so so 30, ten round mag dump, you're talking three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. But if people bring if people bring the money or the ammo, yeah. can they shoot it? 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, boom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm in for two rounds. <laughs> I'll, take, yeah. I'll take a round and then I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I'll definitely I'll definitely at least one. Uh, but I'm keeping that shell casing and then I'm making a chain. Oh, you got you ain't getting the shell casing. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Come on, I you that has to go on a chain. I will walk around with it. Like <laughs> it's <that>. like <laughs> you, know, you, you got to outdo all the other dudes that have like you know. I just walk around with a nine top. millimeter hanging off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like oh, you got a nine millimeter, huh? <laughs> I got, I got a bullet. twenty. That's a knife. That's a bullet. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, that would be fun. So, Don, do you have, like, we're looking at, you know, we're talking, like, uh, dream list, bucket list guns here. Do you have any of those that you'd like to get your hands on? Um, I'm actually, I've got most of the, I don't have any, like, dream bucket list guns. I'd like to get a 107. How would you? Huh? <laughs> Wait a second. That's 105. I'm sorry. 105. 105 howitzer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that was not really handheld. <laughs> now I'd like to get I'd like to get a uh, Barrett 50. Yeah. Okay. But the only gun that I don't have that I'd really like to have. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, you know, that's some money. Do you ever see those used? Yeah. yeah actually, we see them quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. What do they go for used? I can I can actually get my hands on one right now for about fifty five hundred dollars. That's a good deal. Yeah, that is a really yeah. good deal. Yeah, because yeah. they're like, like Marley, they're like twelve, <laughs> twelve nine new. Don't you dare, yeah. baby face. Oh, she would. Oh, she would kill <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's they pop up for that. I mean, I think if you go straight M eighty two, that's what usually pops up for that kind of price. I mean, and then you got, you know, the other ones, the newer models don't show up for that price quite yet. But yeah. Yeah, I like the, the 107 is lighter. It's not as yeah. bulky to carry around. That's the only reason I want the 107. Okay. Then you get that with a so case. Basically, for, you know, what are yeah. we talking about here for those of us who don't know? Looks like, is that a um, 545 by 39 rifle? What are you... <laughs> What? No, what, are we, what are we talking? AK, you, did you just say AK-107? Oh, AK oh. That's a, that's a yeah. 76239. Oh, okay. No, no, we're talking about the Barrett 50. Yeah. Yeah. One's a heavy chassis, one's a light chassis. The 107 is the lighter chassis. Oh, it's a, Barrett, it's a Barrett 107. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try to be You stuff. can't just say, like, you know, 107. I mean, how the, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> Rock, I thought you were a gun guy. Yeah, but I, you know, <laughs> what's that mean? That doesn't mean a lot. Doesn't mean what the rest of you guys knew what he was talking about. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Well, Walter, I'll give it to Babyface. I knew exactly what I was talking about. Oh, sure. Mostly because he said Barrett one hundred and seven. Uh oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, that's cool. That's cool looking. That's cool looking. That's work. 
Yeah, yeah I see someone. There is an AK-107. Yeah, that's the that's like the most modern AK that Russia's using yeah. right now. Okay. I think it actually is a 545. I take that back. I don't think it's a, a 762. Yeah. AK-107. Yeah. I have a 50 BMG keychain. <laughs> oh, let's see. I have some of Walter's ammo around here. Yeah. Oh, you do? Oh, you have shell casing. <laughs> okay, so someone wanted to know, someone asked us a while ago, what's your everyday carry, Don? What's your EDC? I, I carry a while back. Okay, hold on. Let's uh, hold on a second. Let's. Uh, okay, so you wait. You stole. I. Th uh oh. What, what you stole? Baby face has your ammo. I got uh -oh. two rounds from you. <laughs> <laughs> I got ammo cans of that stuff. Come on. Yeah. So what were you gonna say, Don? What's your EDC? Uh, my everyday carry is a Glock 23C, compensated. It's got the factory compensator in there, 40 cal. Okay. And I think you were telling me the like you you don't like uh, what was it you were saying? You're not an appendix carry guy, I know, right? Actually, I I carry depending on what I'm doing. I either carry in the small of my back or I carry not. I don't carry in the waistband. I carry out of the waistband. Out. Oh, okay. So what's the reason for the out of the waistband? You work at the shop. You can. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, at the shop. But you're you, but you do that when you're just out, right? You can't. But just with like a, sure you, well, can. you can do it with sure if you have a shirt. Yeah. Bigger shirt. Oh yeah, if you yeah. can. Okay. Yeah, if you can. Yeah. yeah. Um, thanks, Hank, for putting me on the spot. When you're <laughs> as old as I am, and your appendix challenged. <laughs> so now I'm just—it's okay. not comfortable up front. You so know, I either carry I carry on my side or I carry in the back. To me, it comes down to: Do you like your testicles, or do you want to shoot them off on accident? <laughs> when was the last time anybody heard somebody shooting their testicles off? I don't know. I are just you, are you really <laughs> asking us if we like our testicles? I mean, <laughs> is that, is that a question. You want to carry appendix? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I'm I'm not comfortable appendix. So I carry I'm, I carry on my hip normally. Yeah. Hey, I'm I'm not knocking you for it. You know, I mean. <laughs> Nothing wrong with doing it, but nobody wants to actually accidentally shoot off your nuts. You you can't get nuts replacement that easily, can you? I mean, like if you had to get if you had to get testicles replaced, where's that coming from? It's called I a mean, ping pong ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a well, they've got silicone for women. Um, they do. They have, they have, they have. Yeah, but dudes don't. You don't want to have big testicles. That's not a good thing. <laughs> yeah. You know what they're it, hanging out off the back of their trucks. <laughs> yeah, but there's people. I mean, you know, that's like actual thing. I don't know if you know that, but there are people that have like oversized <laughs> testes. I forgot what that's How called. Did we get on this. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> don't ever tell me. Don't ever get me started with gross stuff like this. Okay? All right, back to firearms. <laughs> we can go exactly. on and on. Yeah, we can go. Okay, what what did you? Are you you're holding up something, Walter? What you got there? This is not exactly what we would call a long range high end uh, shooter here. This is a uh, Magfed SKS. I was gonna say that looks like an SKS. Yeah, when they <laughs> when they bastard they bastardize them to get them in the country. So, yeah, it's a it's a Magfed one. Oh, okay. They're fun, they're fun to shoot. You know, they're blasters. But yeah, um, you know, just one of those. One of those oddballs that that um, they had to make funny looking to get in the country. <laughs> so, um, and then I also pulled out just for fun one of my favorite SKSs, which is a Russian one. Oh, that is nice looking wood too. Yeah, hold on, let me yeah. lock it. Let me lock it on here. Oh yeah, that is. It's a really yeah, nice lam looking one. Laminated. Um, I like the laminated wood on the old Russian guns. Oh yeah, I like it on everything actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a 1954. Um, once again, you know, Ruski stuff, which did they you, don't bring in anymore. So did you get that back in the day when they were like $90 or whatever? Uh, this one back in the day, the Russian ones were running about, I think close to two. Well, yeah, he says they were never $90. No, well, not the Russian ones. No, no. Oh, okay. You can get, the, you can get the, uh, the really beat up ones that yeah. they bring in in 55 yeah. gallon drums and pull them out for 79 or $99 a piece. <laughs> I mean, the, the cheapest SKSs I ever bought were some Chinese ones that were completely used ones. And I think they were, if you bought 10 or more, they were like $49 or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah. They all work. They're all sure. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, um, nine oh four says nine oh four says beautiful SKS Walter. Yeah, yeah, they're they're um, and the SKS is nothing to be laughed about. They're very uh, very accurate and effective. So yeah, um, uh, Wardex says everyone should own at least one F SKS. And uh, yeah, LV LV Louis Cipher says I don't appendix either because of his Buddha blessing. <laughs> hey, that's we're appendix challenged. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard that Buddha blessing. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm gonna so, start using that now. So for me right now, it's tough for me to just go out and buy an SKS because I can build an AK for like the same price. Yeah, I mean. <sighs> I don't. I don't know. I don't think they're worth what they're. You know, four or five hundred bucks. Maybe I don't know. It's just not to me. No, you gotta. You gotta. I mean, the Hugo the Hugo SKSs are nice if you can get a nice new looking one. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, it's hard for me to pull up, put that kind of money down in SKS when I used to get them for a hundred and a half. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. Things like so that. So the Gaunt revolvers. I should have bought one when they were a hundred bucks because now they're like two fifty. You just gotta wait for that guy to come up. This guy, a gun. He he wants a couple hundred bucks for it. It happens yeah. all the time. So yeah. Um, yeah. So now that's that's that you're talking about. That happens when you go out to Knob Creek. Are you doing Knob Creek, Walter? Yes. Yeah, we'll be there. Okay, yeah. you're still doing that, Don. You ever been out to Knob Creek? No. What is Knob Creek? Um, it's coming up in October, and it's in it's in October and July. I mean April, October and April every yeah. year. So that's you know that's the big shoot, right? You've heard of that before, it's, right, Don? Yeah, it's one of the big ones. No, yeah. no, it's that's one I haven't heard of. Knob Creek machine gun shoot. It's been going on for. Oh, I think the late '80s, actually. Where, where, what range? Uh, Knob Creek. <laughs> Knob, okay, I didn't know Knob Creek was a range. I've never heard yeah. of Knob, Knob yeah, Creek a, range. Yeah, Knob Creek range is in um, Tennessee. Is it? It's in Kentucky. I'm trying to Kentucky. think of the city. Um, it's, outside, it's outside of Louisville. Outside yeah. of Louisville. Uh, okay. It's called um, West Point, Kentucky. Yes, yeah, West Point. Yeah. 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 West Point. I, I told. Actually, I didn't Google it or anything. Sure, yeah. sure. All right, that's all right. That's all right. The reason yeah. it's called West Point because it's a West Point on the Ohio River. Oh, okay. Um, it was actually a strategic thing during the Revolutionary War and Civil War. So, hmm. you know, back when we were, uh, everybody had slaves and we we're all bad people. So, um, <laughs> don't get people started. Don't get people started again. Yeah, I don't know. We had the most viewers I've ever seen the other night. <laughs> yeah. So, so how often, um, you know, just tell us how often Knob Creek is and what it takes. To, like, is there a charge to get in? Yeah, they charge um, a daily fee for, you know, if you're just walking in to see the see the shoot. And it's a big gun show, too, not just the shoot part, but big-ass gun show. So Yeah, there's, like, things to buy and sell, too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peddling I mean, wares. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff there, and a lot of people that know where stuff is if you can't find it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. They have three ranges that are shooting during the day. Oh really? They got the main the main range, and there's two lower ranges. You can rent machine guns in the lower ranges. Um, um, yeah, there's a night shoot, a lot of tracers, a lot of fire. Um, yeah, if you ever see those videos where there's just oh, yeah. um, someone's just annihilating a minivan or something Normally like that with machine guns, yeah, it's usually <laughs> Knob Creek. Yeah, it's a. So um, yeah, it's I mean it's it's if you have ever been, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, I've been yeah, going. Since... I'd like to go up and take a look at. I enjoy machine gun shoots, especially when I'm not paying for the ammo. But <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Well, how does that work? Don't you have to pay? Oh, not well, if yeah. you're watching. Yeah. Watch oh, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To just watch it, yeah. But I mean, it's mostly military guns and stuff. I mean, you get a, every once in a while some civilian stuff, walk like hunting rifles, but it's mm -hmm. mostly le teen, leans toward military type weapons. So, um, yeah, it's cool. I go up there. I sell my wares and. I buy stuff and <laughs> pick when's up a lottie, it? come home with it. Yeah. yeah pick when's up the next time? When's the next one? Uh, it's coming up in um, October. Okay, October. So it's right around the corner. So how's the hotel situation around there? Is it? Uh... Uh, you can stay in Shepherdsville, which is on the interstate, or you can stay like in Radcliffe, um, which is um, on the other side. Um, usually, it's not bad. You can usually find something somewhere. You know. Yeah, Mike Bryan said you can do that. Crap anytime here in Colorado Springs. <laughs> what crap? Uh, I'm guessing he's talking about the uh, Knob Creek thing. But you have uh, to get all these people to get together with these. Yeah, the, the, another big shoot is the Big Sandy shoot out in uh, Arizona. And the, the Big Sandy shoot, I haven't been to, but I want to go. But it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Where's that range? What range is it in? It's just called Big Sandy. Oh, Big Sandy. Okay. If you type in Big Sandy, it'll come up. 
Oh. And that's where they shoot. That's where they shoot drones and they shoot um, all kinds of stuff. So, <laughs> um, but that's out about that's out in the middle of nowhere. I think the closest hotel room is forty miles away. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. a lot of people camp and you know. That cool. kind of thing. Yeah, that's what you'll desert, be doing. You'll be roughing it. Desert gets cool at night, from what I understand. So it's yeah, not it like you would die out there. That's that's not so much a um, show like a gun show as it is just a shoot. So. Yeah. Um, but I yeah. heard it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, and then like in Knob Creek, the hotels and all that kind of stuff, they're not too expensive. I'm assuming yeah, they're running probably $80, $90 a night. During oh, okay. Show. Okay. So that's cool. something, you know, it just depends where you stay. What you yeah. Pay. Yeah. You know, at some point I've got to do the Knob Creek thing myself. I haven't, yeah. I mean, I've been there. I've actually been to the Knob Creek because when, um, when the NRA was in Kentucky, we went to Knob Creek for something. I think I think they had a suppressor shoot there. Yeah, they yeah they could have yeah yeah during the NRA show. So and I was like, oh, this is the place Walter's always talking about. Yeah. So yeah. at some point we have to go out there. Um, if I do that, I'll I'll find out because this uh, for some reason people love me in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you were talking before about uh, the one gun that your dream gun. Mm -hmm. I would love to get my hands on an M60. I carried one in the core when I was when I first which, got oh, in. Which one? Which one? M60. M60. Oh, M60. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that one? The... <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that that would be one that I'd want to get my hands on to have. But there's a. I was looking at the numbers for the because there are M60 transferable M60s. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But there are very few of them, and they're running like sixty, seventy thousand dollars to get oh, one. Oh yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Depends. yeah. Um, you can build one. Yeah. You can. No, you can't. Wait, wait a second. Um, no, you can't. Oh, no. well, okay. I mean, I can, but civilians yeah. can't. No. Well, I can. Okay. Yeah. yeah uh, so, have you ever tried to, to just build one, put one together, Don? No, I'm <laughs> normally no. too busy doing other. No. <laughs> normally, try too busy doing other stuff to be thinking about a complete M60 build. Yeah, that's. I can't imagine that being an easy build. Is it yeah. expensive? Also, uh, it's not real cheap. Couple yeah. thousand dollars, I'm guessing, at least. You could probably buy a few of the parts, but you'd have to build everything around it. Yeah, yeah uh, you you gotta hunt. You know, there's stuff out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta but, look uh, around. Maybe when yeah. maybe when you go up to Knob Creek, you can't be in a hurry when stuff like that. You find it here, you find it there. You you know, before you know it, you got all the parts. Yeah, yeah, that's how we have to do it. Barrels, barrels are no problem. You can get you can get barrels. You know, all the different lengths, long ones, short ones. Yeah. Um, I've got I'm, just, I'm always curious how, sorry, I'm interrupting a little bit, but I'm always curious how these sorts of guns got into the NFA. Because somebody brought this thing back. How what did? The Like the M60, like a transferable M60. Well, they, you know, pre-86, you could build them. Oh, you know? okay, okay. So you could just build you it. Know, you could form, form one, one and build one. You know, okay. it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, that's And there's that's all, you know, it. yeah. So... Um, Everybody's yeah, starting to talk about the M249s. We've got one of those in the shop. And it's a, a single action, though, right? Or single action. The uh, semi? Uh, semi auto, yeah. Yeah, not for long. <laughs> 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 We're already yeah. working on the uh, receiver. I like, for the, uh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's you know, that's probably a cool thing. Baby face. We have one of our local law enforcement that wanna try it out, so that's the way to do it. Get a look. That's how you get it done. Babyface, what's your dream gun? Uh MP uh MP five Navy with the Navy lower, the four position Navy lower. Mm. Okay. Well, always four. I've always wanted one. One day I'll own one. I'll that's pretty easy out. though. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, if I <laughs> It's only about money. That's all. It just basically comes out of money. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly I can either become a manufacturer and get one for like two thousand dollars, or save up thirty-five grand to buy one. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's you know that's cool. You know what I? I mean, this is like a more modern thing. I have lots of guns that I like, but I want I want a compressor. <laughs> you want I, want, I want a full auto compressor. I don't know that if you guys know what you'd that is. You have to get a get it's it like a tactical compressor. Yeah. 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 No, but I want a full auto one. Basically, buy yourself an M16 lower, and then you can throw whatever upper you want on it. Just buy a, a compressor upper. When you want to start building it? <laughs> yeah, let's do it, man. We should. We need to do one. You know, int it's integrally suppressed, uh, SBR, full auto. I think the one I really like is the 300 blackout one, man. Yeah. Suppressed, that thing is just like, 
that's one of the the guns that was really a lot of fun. I mean, and, and who you know, like who doesn't want a, a Chris Vector full auto? I'm waiting for you to bring that one out yeah. to the range so you can shoot it. Uh, that's in the safe. It that's a, in the safe. Yeah, we've got that one in the safe. <laughs> yeah. I'll um, give that a try because I we're hear supposed to be, we're supposed to have a Daniel Defense on the way too. Yeah. Now, wasn't there? I think I saw the other day in the in the shop there was a Daniel Defense that's like the compressor, right? Uh yeah, similar to it. Yeah, yeah uh, integrally suppressed. Uh, was it SBR also, or? Um, I don't think that one was. I think that one was sixteen, but I may be wrong. I didn't get a chance to look at it really well. Oh, okay. And then those, I don't know what the, do you remember what the price was on those? I did not see a price tag on it. They keep me yeah. in the back room working on guns. Mostly. Yeah, you're always working on stuff. You know what I, was, I thought I was interesting and I found out from Don, um, I didn't know, and this goes back to the 700, I didn't know you could get the Remington 700 in, um, in black powder. Yeah, oh, they got a I new 50 cal, they got a new 50 cal black powder Remington 700 out. Wow. What? Yep. Yeah, I never, I never knew that. That's the, that's it the, actually has a brass case that you use as your. You put a primer in it and you load it. Wow, and that's, okay. so that's what a, your that's it's what a breech your loading black powder is. gun. Yes, it's a, no, 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 no. It is a muzzle loading breech, uh, muzzle loading black powder. Just put the primer the in. The case has a primer in it, and that becomes your cap. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I never knew. The, Don and I were looking because someone ordered one, right? Yeah, we got a guy that bought one. In fact, it should be at the shop tomorrow. Sounds, uh, no, sounds... I think that I think that guy actually came and got it. I think I don't oh, think he you were off that day because, but I missed it. Like by the time I came in, he had already come because I wanted Is to it, uh, check sounds it out. Awful, sounds awfully complicated to have a black powder rifle. Is it a specialty case? Or can you like turn down 45s or something? Because that'd be cool if you could use like a 45. Well, I, I didn't get a chance to see the cases. Huh. But it, yeah, it looks. I, it's a real short brass case that you put a primer in. Yeah, Jackson Oldman said else, that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Everything else loads from the muzzle, and then you just put that case or cap where you would normally run the bolt in, and the bolt gets run in and it fires. Oh. Somebody, yeah, here here's somebody that has made a conversion for 45. So you take a empty 45 case that's cut short. Yep. And you can use that as your primer. Basically, you just stick the 45 case in, and that is your, you know, that's your all-in-one primer. Which is pretty yeah. cool, actually, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty cool huh. concept. Jackson, <laughs> Sorry, uh, Jackson Oldman says that um, it's been out for a while. You know, now here's the question that I don't know the answer to this, and maybe folks out there know. Do you have to get, like, background checked for that since it's black powder? I don't think no, so. No, there's – no, it's no background check for that one. Okay. So – because it's weird, because I think that uh, whoever was in the store said it had a serial number on it, but I don't know whether or not you do. Yeah, even even right. some of the, uh, like the CVAs, they have serial numbers, but they're black powder. Yeah, so anything that's black powder, you don't get a background check on. From what I understand, no. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah, so yeah, that's the way I understand is you can order black powder guns straight to your door. Because some of those, you mentioned the CV, the, the ones with the, or like the Encores. The Encores, you can put a, a barrel barrel in it, or you can take out that and put a black powder barrel in it. So where's that then? I mean, that I can't answer. I can't help you. Yeah, that that may be one of the ones that because it's both, you may have to do a yeah, background check yeah. on. But yeah. the Remington 700 is black powder only. There is okay. no yeah, way to put a Jackson saying it. it's considered a primitive weapon. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd like to get some, like, uh, clarification on that. But that was really cool when I saw that. Maybe we need to – how much was it, Don? Because maybe we need to get one of those. They're not that bad. They're right around 800 – between <laughs> between seven and 800 bucks. Ow! <laughs> That's a lot of money for a, to have a black powder rifle. Sorry, I'm, I don't care what kind. Yeah, of but it looks like a Remington 700. I don't care what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit what it looks like. You can get That's a lot. Much. If you, I was you, watching some of the YouTube of these guys shooting it, and I'll tell you what: for a black powder, this thing's pretty accurate. It will. A lot of black powder rifles are with the with the projectiles they have now. Yeah, they're all um, running sabots in them. Yeah, yeah. So it, you know. I, I, whatever floats your boat, hey, you know. Yeah. Some gun said that Hickok 45 just did a video on black powder shotgun ship right to his door. That's but, that's, that's yeah, I don't know if you can do that with this Remington 700. Well, if it's primitive, I, why not? If it's yeah. primitive, you should be able to. Yep. Yeah. I mean, what's the big deal? 
And I mean, hunting season for that opens a lot earlier than than regular rifle yeah. season. Well, they have, yeah. in Florida, they have a black powder season. Yeah, and you know, then, which starts earlier. Yes. It yeah, does. it starts yeah. earlier and it runs the whole length of the season. Yeah. Right. You know what? We should really look into yeah, this. I'm telling Tim, you. Tim Keel's talking about a, a full auto smoke pole. <laughs> <laughs> hey Tim, of How course that would be you wanting a full <laughs> auto black powder. <laughs> Uh, well, that's called a Gatlin gun. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Oh man, I saw a, a Colt Bulldog for sale the other day for fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> oh, so really? the brass, yeah, okay. the brass hand cranked Gatling gun. Yeah. Why didn't you whip out the credit card? For I don't know. Fifty thousand. I need that. I just put out my MX Black. Yeah, no, you right? you don't laugh. I'm a... surprised Tony doesn't have one of those already. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He yeah he probably hasn't come across it yet. <laughs> yeah, I will tell you guys. Oh yes, he has. Oh, he, he has. Had, oh, he had one in the wish list box for a long time. <laughs> oh, so what happened? Why didn't he get one? We, we still haven't seen one. It's impractical. Oh, Walter, do you see those? What the Gatlins? Yeah, that's what. That's yeah. yeah I've, they, I've seen the brand new ones that, that Colt sells. Yeah, it's a it's a brand new one. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a cloud. It wasn't a, an original. No, yeah, these no, are, they've, they've, they've replicated them. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Cash right. price forty eight thousand dollars. That's all. Forty eight thousand. Yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, is that is yeah. that the uh, what is it? The six shot or the ten shot? One that looks like got a two six different shot. barrels. This one looks like a six shot. Yeah, they've got the, they've got a six shot, and then they've got one. I believe it's either ten or twelve barrels. It's even bigger. Jesus. Yes. Please, for the love of mercy, somebody <laughs> I know buy a Gatling gun, please. <laughs> forty five seventy. Well. Yeah, forty five yeah. seventy. Yeah, yeah. Hell of a cartridge. Add about yeah. four hundred rounds of forty five seventy. You'll have to, you know, have to get a second mortgage. To <laughs> yeah. There is a uh, gun range, indoor gun range, just north of my daughter in Colorado. You can go and rent one of those by the hour you, you do have to buy the ammunition from the gun store right, of course, <laughs> yeah. but you can buy all the 45 70 ammo you want and they rent one on their indoor 50 yard range and you can shoot the 45 70 gatlin all day long if you want i think to that's going. worth it i think it's worth it everyone that's should do it at least once in their life come on because the next time you see a movie with a Gatling gun, you're like, I shot that. I <laughs> shot that. one of them. Yeah, yeah, it's worth it. Wasn't, the, wasn't in the outlaw Josie Wales, he found up using a um, Gatling gun on the on the bad cavalry guys? Is that what he did? Uh, or the Mexicans? Yeah, or that actually, yeah, that was one of those yeah. brass yeah. Gatling guns. Yeah, there was, okay, there was definitely, yep. was there one in the good, the bad, and the ugly? Or no, no. Or was it the Magnificent Seven? Yeah, probably one of them. I know in the, in the remake. One of them. The remake of the Magnificent Seven had a Gatling guns. Okay. I don't know if you guys even saw that, but the end I of didn't that. see. I uh, I don't can't remember. Yeah. My old my old self can't remember. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you're old man. Don't make me. Don't make me. You know, do more Photoshop. Zz top me, man. Zz top me. <laughs> no, you were you were nice this episode. You should you dug out the Lottie and all that. I'm gonna be nice. Yeah, I did. You. I got my workout. <laughs> I gotta be nice to you on this one. Now, Don, since Don is new, he's gonna probably be the thumbnail. So if you guys have suggestions. <laughs> Don is like, do you want to come into the store? <laughs> I, I was just gonna say, Hank, remember who sees you three, four times a week. <laughs> yes. Okay, listen, you know what? We've been we've been going for a while here, so I'm gonna wrap it up because we've been going for a while. Oh well, hey, babyface, um, before we go, let me show babyface. This is that um this is that Colt Army that I want to rehab. Oh, nice! Yeah, it it needs to be. It needs some work, but yeah, it looks like it needs to be taken down and and. Yeah, it, it has timing issues. And, oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah that's, that's not good. <laughs> well, yeah, not to shoot, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come um, on! You want those bullets at like eleven thirty, right? Yeah, he's yeah. just a little bit off. <laughs> yeah. what, what's that extra? Why, why are you getting that stuff out the side? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some okay. Before we go, someone asked about the Blitzkrieg component front sight. Do you know anything about that, Don? I actually, I, I haven't. But have you guys seen the Blitzkrieg component front sight posts? Yeah. Has anyone? Um... Oh, those are cool. They screw on front sights with a little triangle. No, oh, is it, was it yeah, for I mean, an AR or for? Yeah, it looks like it's for an AR, and it, it takes the place of the one that's in the your regular. So it just post. unscrews and then screws back in. Mm -hmm. Can't be much different than the uh, TFXs where they've got the tritium dot in the middle with the glow around the outside. So yeah, yeah, they have one of those too. Yeah, these are neat. Doesn't sound like it'd be a bad thing. 
looks like they fit Magpul. I don't know if Mag the Magpul front sights are different, but they they show them putting. Them oh, in is that it has like a chevron? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's got a chevron over the top of it. Okay, yeah. and yeah. then it looks like you can get different ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have a tritium one for night sights. It's pretty neat. Yeah, some different colors and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that is cool. It doesn't sound like that'd be a bad idea. Ooh. No. Okay, maybe we should look into that also. <laughs> <laughs> I want all positions. <laughs> No, that's cool. That's cool. So I don't know who that was that shared that with us. Who was that? Let's uh, give him a shout out. Oh, Grusha6. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, you know, we should look into that and put that on something. So, all right, let's wrap this up. Walter, what do yes, you want to What do you want to tell us about what you uh, got going on? Uh, what do I got going on? He's got a lot. Of <laughs> you got a lot of yeah. going on. I got a lot put it away now. Yeah, you got a lot of your a lot of. Yeah, he's a hottie with a lottie. <laughs> I got a lot of put. I got a lot of workout. Um, yeah. <laughs> normal stuff. Facebook, Instagram. Um, you know, just hanging out in the shop, working. You know, just getting her done. So, very cool. Very cool. Baby yeah. face. Uh, not much going on right now. Once, uh, once I get back, I got two weekends booked. Once we get back, we gotta. I gotta shoot suppressors side by side. And do some other stuff. So. Oh, okay. Sweet. Hey, you want to play with some suppressors side by side? I just got a hybrid and a harvester big bore for the three thirty eight. Nice. Yeah, I have, I a, I have a Omega, and then we got some cheap suppressor. Not cheap. It was like a two hundred dollars can that I was going to put next to it to see. I got the oh, Gem Tech. Nice. I got the Gem Tech one. I need to try out. Yeah. We need yeah. to get together and do a suppressor day, guys. Yeah, just yeah, to man. shoot a bunch that's of suppressors. The, that's what I was thinking. We should do that. We yeah, should do totally. that. Get together and we got a quad. A we got a quad day. stack that fifteen dollar can. See how quiet we can get. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Don. Don, did you see this? Was it bad? Yeah, we got some little tiny uh, twenty-two Rebel. suppressors. Rebel. Yeah, Rebel. Yeah, from Rebel silencers or something. Is that like the that? one you can just keep adding pieces to it and make it <laughs> as long as you want to, or something like Basically. that? Basically, I guess you could. Yeah, you could, but these are like little tiny ones. They had a, They basically sold them for free. You just paid for the shipping. Yeah, oh, they, that's what I saw in the shop that had the two red caps on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. three yeah. inches long. Okay, yep, I yeah. saw them. So yeah, yeah if you yeah. stack them, I stack two of them together, and it's, it it. That actually works pretty well. Yeah, I think between, like that. yeah, I think between the three of us, we've got at least five or six of them. We might be able to get a foot out of that sucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that's. But we should we should all definitely get together, do some shooting next time. Walter's coming out to the hacienda. I'll invite you, Don, if you're available. Sounds good. Come by, or, you hey, know, if you what? guys are interested, the 22nd and 23rd of September, there is a range called Branford Sportsman's Park. There is a Long distance and close quarters course Ooh. being taught by a, you guys are going to laugh, a Coast Guard Hitron sniper. The guys that hang out of the choppers and shoot the go fast boats with the 50s. That's cool. <laughs> going to be shooting low light conditions at night, chem lights at 850. So, oh, that sounds really cool. <laughs> what does that cl uh, class cost? It's $300. It is an all day Saturday, Saturday night, and Sunday. This wow. is going to be a two-day class. You camp out, bivouac with the guys out in the woods, and there's going to be a lot of shooting going around. They said on an average of 450 rounds between both rifles and pistol. Okay. Yeah, that sounds cool. Um, they do transition drills from rifle to pistol, lots of long-distance stuff, and it is a blast. Okay. Yeah, we should, we should see if we can get a link or something to that and put that in the description of this video. I'll get a hold of I'll get a hold of uh, Josh, the guy that uh, the Hitron sniper. He's got a link, and I'll get him to get a hold of you. He just got deployed. He's going to be gone for another two weeks, I think. As soon as he gets back, I'll get something set up for you guys so you can get a link to it. Okay, but cool. If, if you enjoy long distance and transitioning and stuff like that, this is one of the best courses. I'll be out there shooting. So. Oh, sweet. Okay, awesome. I'm, I'm going to go play with a new 308. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let me, before I wrap it up here, I want to thank everyone for watching. Um, tomorrow, our guest is going to be TFB Patrick. So from, you know, Patrick R. From the, from the Firearm blog. So, you know, he, he's going to be coming in. That should be interesting. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. It's going to be late. So I think we're starting at 9 p.m. tomorrow, Eastern wow. time. It's wow. going to be 8 p.m. Central and 6 Pacific because, you know, he's on a... He's on a different. Uh, he's yeah. in a different time zone. California time. Yeah, 
Yeah, <laughs> so that should be fun. We've got the firearm blog, dude. We should we should, we'll probably talk about Sig P three twenties. Get your hammer out. Get yeah, hammer get, out. get your questions ready. So we'll have him on. Hey, did tomorrow. you see the full auto adapter for it? Oh, oh boy. Oh, no. It's the staircase I'm out behind your house. <laughs> <laughs> Just drop it and let it bounce like the uh, like the uh, movies do. Slinky down a stair, down the, down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So that's what we're gonna be doing. That's what we're gonna be doing tomorrow. I wanna, I wanna save, thank. save them for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We're not gonna be dropping a P320 down the steps <laughs> in case you're wondering. Hey, I'll get a video tonight for you guys. You'll be all set. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> so we will be doing that. I want to thank everyone for all the uh, uh, questions, comments, and all that kind of good stuff. It's been fun. I want to thank everyone that sponsors us. That includes Safety Harbor Firearms and Walter, who's here. Yes, sir. So there he goes. There goes Walter right there. You know, that's the man. He helps us out as well as Ran CLP and Andrew's Custom Leather. And of course, of course, Big Daddy Guns. Of you know where that's where Don and myself come from. We're representing Big Daddy Guns, and they give us the studio, all the airtime. They allow us to talk all the shit that we talk, <laughs> and all kinds of fun toys to play with. Yes, and yes, and that's how we get access to that. And of course, I want to thank everyone that sponsors us on Patreon. We are Patreon slash Hank Strange, and uh, we appreciate your patronage and you guys looking out for us. We need it now more than ever. With that being said. I'm going to hit you guys up with the peace signs. We're out of here. Peace out.